All right, guys, I'm live. Obviously, I'm late every single time, but I got to wait until I'm actually ready. And I always take more time than I think I'm going to. So what's up, everybody? Obviously, this I'm late is, every uh, single part time, two. but I got to wait. Um, this is the four and a half hour long uh, Graham Hancock, highly anticipated versus uh, Flint Dibble, uh, the archaeologist. I mean, he is, but we don't have to, you know, act like he really is. Um, and we're, we're going to go through the rest of this now. Well, we it might be three parts. Uh, part one is on uh, Twitter right now. I disputed the claim. Not sure if the claim is... I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't know if it's going to stay on YouTube or not. But um, we're going to start here. I'm not going to play the video. I'm just going to select images as we go to avoid the copyright strike since it really only seems to be on video. Um, and, and again, I'm allowed to do this. Like, this is fair use, but, you know, YouTube's automated system doesn't have the capability to uh to tell and uh joe rogan's company doesn't seem to be on top of this you know I, all those i'm about to digress but i'm gonna digress um all of those like you know do, the other comedy podcasts they got like 15 people working for them that's too much but joe rogan's got like jamie and then one or two other guys and uh that's probably not enough um you know whatever i i think he's so used to just being on top regardless um let's go we're going to start here. When it starts, let me know about the audio in the comments, please. I appreciate it. Please like the video. Um, Patreon's $2 a month. Hop on the Twitter. Um, all this stuff. Lots of stuff going on. More interviews coming up. They're, they're lined up in the schedule. Um, and let's let's do it. Okay, I'm sorry for misrepresenting your work, Graham, but there's no room sorry. for some sort of large agricultural civilization yeah, right along it. most of these coasts because the way sea level rise has worked is it's variable in different places. And so we actually cultural have a whole lot of coverage right. near to Ice Age coasts from the end of the Ice Age, not the glacial maximum. Can you explain those lines? Yeah, so these are lines based on at 100 meters and 120 meters of sea level rise, which is about the amount that existed from the Younger Dryas. There's more from the glacial maximum, but that's 20,000 years ago. We're talking about 12,000 years ago at the end of the Ice Age. And so they're only, these, all these caves on the north of Spain are only a few miles away from that Ice Age coastline. So just, you know, short walking distance. Right. So anything that had been submerged would have to be within those boundaries. Yeah, exactly. And there's only a few miles there. It's not like a huge untapped uh, landscape to look at, if you see what I mean. Not in the Bay of Biscay. No. Not in the Bay of Biscay. Not in many places. But uh, take the Cinder Shelf, places, for example. Very not specific. Okay. Enormous amount of uh, submerged material there. I'm not disputing that, that we're going to find... <laughs> that we're going to find hunter-gatherer sites underwater. I'm simply saying, and you seem to keep evading this issue, that not enough has been done to rule out the possibility of a lost civilization. There were hunter-gatherers all over the world during the Ice Age, are, and of right? course we're going to find hunter-gatherer sites underwater. But to say that we've done enough underwater archaeology to rule out the possibility that something very surprising might be found underwater. And, and I'm going to remind you again, most underwater archaeology, which is very, very expensive, even more expensive than regular archaeology, looks for shipwrecks and is very pointed to specific areas. It's, it's only there has been very little done that isn't related to shipwrecks. And uh, Flint Dibble knows that. He knows that and he's actively misrepresenting it. To, to me, is actually dishonest. There's just not enough being done. There's not enough being done in the Sahara. There's not enough being done in the Amazon. And there's not been done enough on those 27 million square kilometers of submerged continental shelves. The whole area between uh, the Malaysian Peninsula, the Indonesian islands, out over to New Guinea and Australia, the, the submerged Sunda shelf and the, and, and the, the, the Sahul uh, area, to me is absolutely I, fascinating. Is and not enough underwater archaeology has been done there to rule out the possibility. I'm not saying that we're not going to find hunter-gatherer sites. Of course we are. But I'm saying that for archaeology to claim uh, and to quite viciously and unpleasantly attack me for suggesting the possibility that there might be a lost civilization. Oh, is that better? Is that too much? While having failed thus far to investigate thoroughly the vast areas of the submerged continental shelves, the vast areas of the Amazon rainforest, the vast areas of the... Like more than 99%, like not even close to 1% of it has been excavated. And I, I remember right before the video ended in part one, um, loud with reverb. Oh, no. That's not good. Loud with reverb. Okay. We don't want that. 
Um, uh, so the, it, let me know if it's fixed. Um, played with the settings. Um, there, less than 1% has been excavated. He dodged the question earlier. The, this question um, was, oh, my voice. My, my voice is loud with reverb. I mean, can can you hear it right? Um, like, is it is it distracting? Too hot? I don't know what's happening. I I, I gotta listen in for a second. I'm gonna have to drop something. In. Like, is it is it? Oh my god, that's too so hot? bad. I can hear that. I don't know what's happening. I I, I gotta listen in for a second. I'm gonna have to drop something. In. Like, is it is it? Oh my god, that's too so hot? bad. I, can hear that. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it's an hour and a half. I wish I could. It's I, on. I, I gotta listen in for a second. I'm gonna have to. Drop something. Uh, it's on Twitter. Like, is it? Is it? Oh my god, that's too so hot. bad. I, I, can hear that. I don't know oh, what's happening. It's an hour and a half. I wish I could. It's I, on. I, I think I had to turn off. I'm gonna have to drop something. Uh, it's on Twitter. Oh my god, that's too so hot. bad. I don't know what's happening. It's an hour and a half. I wish I could. It's on. I think I had to turn off. I'm gonna have to drop something. It's on Twitter. Oh my god, that's too hot. I don't know what's happening. It's an hour and a half. I wish I could. It's on. I think I had to turn off. I'm gonna have to drop something. It's on Twitter. Oh my god. I think that's just the monitor, and I think I turned it off. So let's see. Oh my! Oh my God! I think that's just the monitor. How are we and doing I think now? I turned it I, off. I, so let's. See. So these problems oh should be mostly. Oh my God! Three streams at once. I think that's just the monitor. How are we doing I think now? I turned, oh, I'm trying to listen back, and it's playing through the. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I just got back my audio interface. I just got it back. Illegitimate streamer. <laughs> guys, dude, I get made fun of all the time on Five Till Midnight by the guys because I am so bad at this stuff. Um, okay, how are we doing now? It bears repeating. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh no, okay. Look, it's fine. Look, my audience at this point is very understanding about my inability to work the tech. Um, and you guys are hilarious, so I appreciate that. Um, it should be good now. Let's um, see. And you guys are hilarious, so. I I haven't drank that much, been hearing lots of voices. All right. Look, how we doing? How we doing now? It's fine now. Okay, cool. I, I just got my audio interface back. Um, it broke Sargon moment. I haven't watched much of his, but I assume he also is bad at the tech. Eventually, I'll be able to hire somebody who isn't, um, you know, I don't want to call myself stupid, but, um, you know, it's hard to argue that right now. Man's drinking LSD. That was like... That, that, that was a phase, okay? And that phase is over. Um, <laughs> all right, boys. Uh, and, and possibly women. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's keep it going. Let me know about the audio in the comments. Make sure it's still good. Um, but let's go. Oh, what I wanted to say, um, and I'm going to have to timestamp this again. Oh, gosh. I'm going to have to timestamp this again at um, 8 start here there are no women here yeah my my audience uh in the, in the stats it's like it's like 96 percent men i think um almost all of them between 25 and 45 don't get shut shut down again yeah rex i'm not gonna do the video so right before in part one which if you didn't watch um you, you know you can join in at any point but it's it's on twitter uh you're here and you're a girl fantastic um i don't know if i believe you I have to take your word for it now, I always pay too much attention to the comments. So Graham and, and Flint, they're talking about this thing. You know what? We're just going to run it because I forgot what I was going to say. Let's go. Sahara Desert that have not been investigated. That claim is premature and that claim is disingenuous. But we have thousands of sites from these areas. I don't care areas. how but many Graham, sites you've give got. me a second. There's 3,000 under... No, dude, it, see, this is what he wants to do. Give me a second. Bro, you already completely diverted from his question. That's what happened right before this. Water sites Graham. that have been found. Graham, working with archaeology Graham, is working Graham. from the known and what we actually have. Exactly. It's working from the known and what we actually have. And yet he thinks that from what we actually have, you can draw comparisons of what isn't there. Okay? Towards the unknown. And when you say that we're not investigating these areas, I'm showing you that we have. We have no, evidence no, I'm, from I'm, all... I'm, I'm, they have excavated a few of them. A few sites. Like, literally, a few sites. And they're not looking... You, you got to be looking for the th specific thing, because if not, you're not going to find it. It's farther down. It's in a slightly different spot. It, it, it's expensive. It's very expensive. It's more expensive underwater. OK, so this is not gosh, this is just not freaking. 
Okay. Oh, right. you have. Okay, so let me explain. Don't and share misrepresent with people. me. I'm not misrepresenting. Yes, you of are. Of course, you've you've surveyed some of those areas. Yes. Uh, we, and there's a difference between surveying and excavating. We're not going to find most of the things that Graham is talking about from a survey, which is non-intrusive. You're not digging. Whereas from an excavation, which needs to be pointed, you need to go lower to find the stuff that Graham is talking about that's older, and it barely ever happens. Nine, less than 99%, probably less than 99.9% of the Amazon, no, definitely less than 99.9% .9 of the Amazon, Sahara, and uh, these submerged areas that weren't submerged 6,000 years ago have been excavated. We've surveyed quite a bit of them, and quite a bit of them are what, on What do you land. mean by quite a bit? How much how much of the submission? Give us a straight answer. Graham, I'm going to keep studied. showing you areas that we have evidence. He's not answering the direct question. He's incapable of arguing outside of his own framework. For Why do we have so much evidence for ephemeral hunter-gatherers, but not evidence from an advanced civilization that is global? What? That should leave behind monuments that are far easier to find. Instead, Flint. what we get are plentiful sites oh, outside and in caves that show coastal interactions. Meltdown. We have evidence of these hunter-gatherers interacting with the coastlines. They're collecting shellfish and fish. They're turning them into beads. They turn whale bones into, into points to hunt with, into other kinds of artifacts. And these whale bones and these shells don't oh just God. end up on those coastal this sites. Guy thinks they end up classroom. further inland as well. So we can see all over the world very this arrogant, kind of right. coastal interaction. And it's not just areas that, like that. So, for example, sea level rise is not even everywhere. Just off the, on the southern coast of Crete, you know I've that? been here. Not Dr. Tom Strasser has showed me around this site. Very thankfully, I'm very much in debt to him. This is an area where the African tectonic plate is moving under the European tectonic plate, and so the land is rising faster than the sea level has risen. Agreed. And so Tom specifically targeted it for survey. He found dozens of sites. For survey. And he excavated several of them. What this survey. Survey, survey, survey. Graham has been asking for 30 minutes before this about excavation and a very very, very easy question. Is, is this is an uplifted sea cave. It's a cave that was formed from wave action, you know, before the Ice Age, and then with <coughs> tectonic uplift, it raised up many, many, many meters above the current sea level. And what did he find? He found a Stone Age hunter-gatherer camp. He excavated it. He found obsidian. He found other kinds of lithic tools. He found animal bones, and he dated it to right at the end of the Ice Age, right? None of that. He was specifically looking for a cave. This is where you're going to find hunter-gatherers. You don't find advanced civilization people living in a fucking cave, dude. Surprising to me. Okay, Just but we can my find this point. stuff so easily. How much of the submerged continental shelves have actually been investigated by archaeology? Is it, it, doesn't it, doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. 27 we... million square kilometers, the size of Europe and China added together, and you've investigated less than 5% of it. That doesn't matter. The fact that we found thousands of these hunter-gatherer sites does not matter. It does matter. Of oh, course oh, you're going oh, to find oh, oh, oh. No, they have not found thousands of hunter-gatherer sites underwater. That is a lie, and I will confirm that. But I'm telling you, that is a lie. That's, 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 that's what I expect to find in, in, in the world. Both things can be true. Both can be true. Or we can go to North America where we have 12,000 different sites, I think it is, with Clovis points. And we can see... On land. See where these coastlines are. On the east... And these were not excavated down low enough in the layers to find the uh, the age that you would need to they make assumptions and then they stop where they think their assumptions or where they where their assumptions end so this is freshman year in college archaeology flint knows this he's lying eastern seaboard yes there's a large amount he of fails. submerged coast, continental shelf including the area in florida where we saw jessica cook Hale dived and found sites. If you look at the western seaboard, on the other hand, there is not nearly as much of a submerged continental shelf. And what's really interesting about the western seaboard is not only have we been exploring it for 40 plus years and we have multiple sites dating to this period at the end of the Ice Age, sometimes with wood and cording, other times with stone tools, <laughs> all of them hunter-gatherers. One second, Graham. Sure. One and second, so Graham. I've only been talking for 45 first minutes hypothesis, straight. hypothesis, right? Mm -hmm. It's been decades. Not answering you, your you question. You bring up uh, news articles and headlines that say that it's still being debunked. That's not what archaeology is. Our articles ourselves don't say that. Our articles instead present new hypotheses like the Kelp Highway hypothesis because the scholars do not write the headlines for media articles. I cannot help how journalists portray what we do, okay? And so what we're looking at is this new migration pathway, the Kelp Highway hypothesis done by John Erlinson and others. Okay, and here's one key detail. 
Flint himself has routinely called uh, uh, him, freaking what's his name, Graham Hancock, a pseudo archaeologist, even though he only has ever claimed to be a journalist. But now when the shoe's on the other foot and it doesn't help him to call journalists archaeologists, then he just doesn't do it. We can do is we can specifically target areas that are above water so what's happening along the pacific coast north in canada is the glacier is melting and that causes sea level rise but the weight of the glacier pushes down the land so as it Who melts cares? there's less weight on the land and it's called isostatic rebound so there's a whole chunk of the pacific coast on, on uh sorry uh, along canada where it's above land right now for us to excavate. And people have been targeting that out of the University of Victoria, for example. Duncan McLaren has found footprints right there on what is Who an end of the cares? Ice Age coast from about 15,000 years ago. These are footprints in beach sand from three different people from this analysis. And so we can get these ephemeral traces of hunter-gatherers moving into the Americas at this time. Maybe some of them had lived there for a few thousand years. And we can target these areas that are above land that target. were Ice Age coasts target using our knowledge areas. of geology. That is what we do. It's not that we're necessarily looking for one thing or another we're targeting areas that are exposed You're, that we but, can understand but they're targeting they're searching for specific things based on their own assumptions so they they know where they might find certain things based on what they've learned in the past that's why they don't dig down low enough that's why they look in certain places and not others where like look stone age and like uh, paleo indian sites are not found in the same locations as you might find uh, later civilizations. They're just not. Stand coastal interactions at this early time. And whatever we find, whether it's footprints or something else, we work to publish it. And then we put together clear dates of the stratigraphy in order to get the it at high resolution how low when these people they were go? walking on this coastline, on this beach, if you see what I mean. These three different people right here. But what, how did you feel? And would maybe, is it possible that it, based on Graham's theory of this giant flowing of water, that the older footprints that might have been there would were to be washed away, is it even possible that they weren't washed away? And why are you not bringing that up? When you, Tom Dillahanty is, is Tom, say, Tom Dillahay was the excavator. Dillahay, Monteverde. How did you feel when he was describing what was ultimately true, but was being dismissed and he was being shut off and people weren't willing to look at the data. How do you feel as an archaeologist? Oh, I think that that's that. complete. I don't mean that what Graham's saying is bullshit. I think it's complete bullshit for any colleagues of mine that try to shoot down actual evidence. That is and that is what he does. And yet he thinks that he gets to decide what actual evidence is. That's that's what he does. He's doing exactly what he just called his complete bullshit. Is ridiculous. I'm not trying to say that all of archaeologists Archaeology is like any community of people. There includes some assholes. I have worked with some assholes before, right? And so Everyone I, that's worked with I would has say, though, that asshole. to represent that as all of archaeology is kind of silly because most archaeologists don't focus on the peopling of America. Me, I do ancient Greek research when people arrive. Okay, you do ancient Greek research, and yet you're talking with authority about all these other subjects that Graham knows far more than you about. In America does not impact the research I do, for example. All my Greek colleagues, all my, people that do Chinese archaeology, people that do archaeology of Australia, none of those people really have a horse in the game for the peopling of Americas. And so if there were a few asshole archaeologists, well, then I condemn them. I think that is a, a problem. Condemn yourself. You know, and I think that there are, just like in any community of people, whether it's politicians, entertainers, or in your neighborhood, there's assholes. We should say that that's the wrong way to be and if those people are assholes i think that's a problem and you were showing us a picture of florida uh, yeah recently the the submerged continental shelf around florida mm -hmm. let's go back to that sure that's why i interrupted you um and apologies for, for doing that you're fine now we're looking at the florida peninsula and just to the right of that we're looking at a large uh, island that was above water during the ice age uh, it's in the light shaded green area. The dark shaded bit is the island called Andros. Um, but uh, what we're looking at is the Bahama banks that were above water during the Ice Age. So this might be a good opportunity to get into the controversial issue of uh, Bimini. 
uh, which is much oh, the yeah. issues that uh, I featured in Ancient Apocalypse. And oh, I've that means so much, man. Thank you for saying that. Do you that. mind if I, I actually finish this. my I love having other people or... interested in this. It means oh, so ahead. much to me, yes. seriously. Okay, sorry. I thought, I thought, okay. I thought, I thought no, you're had. fine. Um, All right, we'll, we'll go back to Bimini. Yeah, we can get to Bimini in a second. I do want to point out right, that right well, we're gonna in downtown Miami That's fine. right here love is an archaeological site called Cutler Ridge, which also dates to the end of the Ice Age. It has shells, it has lithics, it has even, I think, human remains, and it shows that kind of coastal interaction not too far from the Ice Age coast. It's just a few miles away. Um, sorry, yeah, let me get... Do you have images from that? No, I don't think I do. I'm sorry. No worries. We could right. Google it if we want. But I do want to just sort you of... sounded so sad. ...saying that we have coastal Ice Age archaeology from around the world. From Africa, from Asia, from Australia, from the Americas. Everywhere you look, there are Ice Age coastal sites. For example, this set of beads from a, a burial of a child from La Madeleine. These are marine beads found inland. They were embroidered into the, cl into the clothes that this child was buried in, right? It's about a seven-year-old uh, little child buried there. And so you get these kind of pictures of the past, of the people that lived in this sort of tough terrain and exploited the coasts all over the world. And so I just want to really emphasize Underwater archaeology, we find things, for example, like a seawall off the coast of Israel trying to combat the coast level rise that was happening in the Stone Age, right? We have lithic artifacts on submerged archaeological sites all over the world from different periods. And so we really are looking for this. Now, we're not just finding shipwrecks. And we are finding plentiful Stone Age stuff, hunter-gatherer sites, and it just sort of, it strikes me as unbelievable that we have so many thousands of sites that that show coastal interactions at the end of the ice age from these hunter gatherers but we have no evidence of a lost uh, advanced civilization that strikes me as maybe this doesn't disprove it but it makes it very very hard to swallow if you see what i mean because nobody n really understands how much archaeology yes. we have we craig have even the even the the parts that were submerged like, you know, you're not, you're not going to go in these deep trenches, but even the parts that were submerged 6,000 years ago that we know about from uh, fluvial geology and, and, and all these uh, water flows, hydrology, we know where the water levels were. And uh, we know that even the areas that like less than 1%, less than 0.1% have been excavated or even, I, I don't know how much has been surveyed, but I would be willing to bet less than 1%. This is very hard to, to survey effectively underwater. I, you know, I hope the technology will improve have a lot these days. It is a study of big data. It's not a study of just going to one site after another. It's about aggregating this yes. to understand how people were living at the past and sometimes zooming in to get pictures of individual people and how they survived. Uh, to draw, <coughs> I have to really repeat myself here. Yeah, you, I can uh, go back we're, up there. We're, we're, we're looking at um, Bimini. less than 5% of the continental shelves that have been studied at all by archaeology. I'm not surprised that we find hunter-gatherer traces underwater. I'm very glad that we do. I would be very surprised if we didn't. But what I'm saying is that not enough of that 27 million square kilometers has been investigated. Only a tiny fraction tiny has fraction. been investigated. Tiny, tiny fraction. That fraction, fraction is not enough to draw the conclusion that we can absolutely say there is no lost <laughs> civilization. Same goes for the Amazon rainforest. Same goes for the Sahara Desert. But can, but can we say there's no true, evidence man. for an advanced civilization in what they have studied? In what they have studied, yes, we can say there's no evidence yeah. for an advanced civilization. But that's, that brings us to another issue of what is studied and what is not studied by archaeology, uh, which, which we can get into, but, and we will get into. But I would like to go back to uh, Flint's um, inundation map of, uh, yeah, yeah. of Bimini. It's, it's here. Um, and uh, we... Um, just beneath the compass rose there... Uh, you can can we highlight that somehow? Down yeah, here. that that the the submerged Bahama banks, the Grand Bahama banks. You're on them now. That was a big island above water during the Ice Age, and it actually stayed above water until about six thousand nine hundred years ago. So let's just talk because I know Bimini has been a very controversial issue. I don't know if it's a controversial issue for you, but certainly for a large number of your colleagues. The suggestion that the so-called Bimini Road is a man-made um, artifact has been uh, mocked and laughed at a, a, a great deal. I'm not sure if mocked is right, but I've definitely, definitely heard it's a mocked. geological sand beach. Yeah, it's yeah, the beach yeah. sand. Can we see it? Are, are you familiar with the, um, with the uh, general mm. work that's been done at Bimini? 
I am not a geologist, <laughs> um, so I'll go with no. That doesn't. Uh, but this I've is heard an archaeologist. Geologist that it is definitely not man-made. Okay. One geo. Well, my my I, buddy. I'm not my, racist. I have a black friend. Can I put my idiot HDMI? HDMI. Oh, I've got so many different pairs of glasses here. It's really crazy. Um, <laughs> Inundation maps. Yes, I just want to say I worked with Dr. Glenn Milne, uh, who's uh, a leading geologist studying marine. Um, you think this is natural? Archaeology. They're they're uh, saying that that is natural. This is the Piri Reese map. A low res. Uh, and change my glasses yet again. I'll tell you, old age is a bitch. Um, so it's this map that I'm interested in. It's this large island. And the possibility that that large island, this island uh, was the depicted left. on as it looked uh, during the last ice age, that it is the submerged uh, Bahama Banks, and that running up the middle of it is a depiction of the so-called uh, Bimini Road. Um, now, I'm showing, right as here. it looks today, top left, uh, where the Bimini Islands are and the island of Andros. Uh, if you go back 4,800 years, bottom left, uh, you can see that the, the Grand Bahama Banks were submerged. But up until 6,900 years ago, they were above water. Um, and uh, 12,400 years ago, they were above water. And I must say, that looks very much to me uh, like the island that's depicted on the Piri Reese map. 1513, uh, this, this is map. Milne. He so, with me. by the way, the Piri Reese map is a map that is supposedly, um, and it seems to be legitimate, um, it's from 1513, and it's supposed to be based on these older source materials that we no longer have. Uh, yeah. On the inundation maps for my 2002 book, Underworld, uh, I think you have to agree that he's a very major expert in the field. Uh, and um, these, um, in, oops, these inundation maps uh, that he has that he has given us are a very accurate representation. And those original maps, the ancient ones, how old are they? Uh, that's the 1513 Piri Reese 13. map, uh, which was based on, on more than 20 older source maps, uh, as he tells us in his own handwriting. We only have a fragment of the map. It's full of inaccuracies and problems. Um, but I'm just. Do you know what would convince me? What? So I used to do a lot of GIS for archaeological projects where I'd take historical maps Global and I'd try to line them up with actual information terrain, like systems that's used in geography like and archaeology. You should work on georectifying these maps mm -hmm. to see how they line up in real space. Because right now what I see, I have to squint to see if it looks right or not. That, and that's so actually a very with something good like suggestion. A GIS expert to georectify this stuff and show how actually accurate it would be, where you could actually statistically measure that, would make it a He's, lot more That's a great suggestion. Money. No, that's a, that's a very good idea. Uh, Flynn, no. Thank you. It is a good uh, idea. See images of uh, the Bimini Road itself. I'll, I'll show you a couple of slides. Um, if I can put this up. Ah, come on. And uh, that's me diving on the Bimini Road. Um, and so these are arranged in what fashion? I see the small segments of it. No, there's a there's a, a huge extensive area it runs for about uh, more than more than half a mile uh, right off the coast of, of Bimini of these of these blocks. Dude, I mean, now look at what this I want thing. To Are you serious? Man-made um, or a a suggestion natural? That this is this? totally a natural site. Are, are you f you're not familiar at all with the work that's been done on this flint? It's not my expertise. No. Yeah, um, because. Uh, if you read the literature, you'll find that um, uh, archaeologists constantly refer to uh, work that was done um, by Eugene Shin um, and uh, a couple of other geologists arguing that A, B, the Mooney Road is totally natural, uh, and B, that it's pretty young. It's only, it's only 3,000 years old or so. Um, but this is an area where there, there's no way it's there's natural. A real, it doesn't make any sense. A real problem. Uh, because in the literature on that, archaeologists cite the 1980 and later work of Eugene Shin, Morocco, uh, which itself cites his 1978 article. Uh, but the very, 1978 article is very hard to find. Uh, I had to do a lot of work to get hold of it, and I did. And actually, the 1978 article contradicts uh, almost everything that's said in the 1980 and later and later articles. Um, the whole I would authority like to see that article. Uh, for um, are there any artifacts from the Bimini Road? Uh, there. Uh
from the road? Are there artifacts from the road? Dude. Come on, brother. Come on now. Are there artifacts from the road? The road is, is the artifact. It's right there. Because I've excavated road surfaces I and I found the lots of road artifacts. Itself as an artifact. But let me just play you again, Jamie. The road, the road itself is an artifact. You. Let me just if you think it's human, it's artifact. Eugene Shin, uh, upon whose authority uh, the Bimini Road is being dismissed as... Uh, I, I wouldn't know, Thomas, but that's a decent question to ask for somebody with the knowledge. Could we, could we airdrop this, Jamie? And then I'd like to show you what a road surface looks like under excavation afterwards. From I'd like to see that. Romania. So this is it's also very possible that um, with a large tidal event that it would wipe away any sort of artifacts. I mean, if you really dug in there, you'd probably be able to find them, um, but that would be expensive and require a lot of funding. By who's, who's a lot. Millions. Them, millions at a start. By archaeology to dismiss it as A, totally natural, and B, totally recent. So we would hope that he would be um, an honest person, that he wouldn't um, disguise his own findings from an earlier period of time. How do I play it? Oh, you play it. Okay. Um, and this is just a little clip from Eugene Shin. Yeah, I, well, I, I remember when I first met you, I was a young graduate student at Rasmus. And I remember running into you and you were carving this stone statue. And somebody asked you what you were doing with it, and you said you were taking it over to the Bahamas and going to throw it overboard and hoping that these sheep would find it. <laughs> So I don't know if you followed up on that. Well, really someone know. told me they saw it in a magazine somewhere, but I, I kept waiting for, you know, something that really happened and that really happened. The, uh, the guy who's planting artifacts on the Bimini Road uh, is the main authority that is used to dismiss the Bimini Road as a man-made as a man-made structure. Did he actually yeah, do Look, that? you can... So... I, I don't know about underwater when you're doing it, but at, at least in um, in regular archaeology, if there's something under the ground, you can tell just, just like anybody that's done archaeology. I've done archaeology. I'm not an archaeologist, but I have done it um, under under like professional guidance. I, I, I am a archaeology profession professional in the sense that I did do a archaeology field school, which trains you to be an archaeology tech. Um, so I, I'm qualified as an archaeology tech, essentially. Uh, there's no certification for it, but I, I, I did the field school that would require me to do it. Um, so, and some of my classmates from that, they, they, they at least in the past, have been doing that. Um, you can tell. You can tell if it's been disturbed. You would know if it just landed there. If it's 8,000 years old or even 3,000, even 500 years old, it's going to look different than if it just got dropped there. That, that's not, it's a non-thing. Or was he just joking around about doing it? Not that? clear. I think joking about it would be in very bad taste as well. Um, yeah. And especially referring to the sheep uh, who think that it, uh, that it might be. Yeah, it, uh, it's condescending. It's certainly not a scientific approach. And Flint, Flint is no, laughing about it. To my mind, it's not a scientific approach at all. I think this is the moment where I'm going to do my sort of second major presentation. Do you mind if I quickly show some images of a road surface? Yeah, please. I'm very happy for you to do sure. something. Sure. Jamie, do you mind showing the HDMI? I want to too. I would like to see better images of Bimini Road, maybe, you know, yeah, more. Jamie, there's so, loads of images of Bimini Road on the, on, on the net. In, on in the Romania, net. we did a series of magnetometry surveys. This is called Histria. It's, it's sometimes referred to as the Romanian Pompeii. And so to ground truth our magnetometry survey, we opened Magnet. up trenches to find these Roman roads. And so what you see when you uh, look at Roman roads is you see pottery in the packing of it. You see animal bones. In fact, they specifically use these complete um, toe, uh, foot bones from cattle and horses and amphora toes. Amphora are these kind of uh, ceramic vessels used to transport wine and olive oil and things like that as drainage. And so, you know, as you dig into a road surface, you expect to find this kind of material everywhere. I've excavated roads in Greece, in Italy, and in Romania. And how old are these roads? These are from, uh, this is about 2,000 years ago. Yeah. And so this is the kind of packing that you get. You get plentiful artifacts associated with roads all the time. And there's no reason. I could see maybe the animal bones not preserving underwater, but ceramics preserve really well. Those thousands and thousands of shipwrecks that we've excavated, most of what we find is the wood from the ship and then ceramic vessels. And so that That's survives. True. Ceramic is virtually indestructible once it's high fired. And so, you know, Within, this is the kind of stuff that we find alongside which it would in a ship. find it everywhere in the world. 
and like inside uh, of Bimini, the wood of the ship. How much ser- searching have they done looking for things like that? A great deal of, been, of work has been done by, by amateurs who archaeologists have poured really most unpleasant scorn on for, for several decades. Um, but that, that work um, has, uh, in my view, been, been highly valuable and has been worthwhile doing. I don't claim that the Bimini Road is a road. That's just what it's referred to these days. I, I, I do claim that it's a very large megalithic structure. Uh, which yeah actually that makes sense because you can look at them and while it's in a line it doesn't seem like you would actually it doesn't look like any other road i've seen but the idea that these flat stones um i mean uh, let's go back to them are natural it's it's crazy just because it's not a road doesn't mean that it's it's natural i mean that that's something that was placed there was submerged by it's rising too perfect. sea levels. So calling it a road is an unfortunate term. Um, you can't compare it to this road. And we don't know what it is, but mm-hmm. it's what it is is a series of megalithic blocks laid out side by side. Let's see Sometimes better on images of, of it, perhaps blocks. something more that gives you the scale of it, because the, the, there's a problem with looking at things up close. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. can I just give a quick shout out to yeah. UT Austin, which directs that project Dude, in Romania? Shut yeah. up. Yeah. Shout Adam out Rabinowitz, UT Austin. UT Austin, you guys rock. Shout out. Shut okay, up. So Flint. that looks it interrupts crazy everything. Animated. That last image, though, go to go back to that last one. That that's crazy. Bimini is in the Bahamas. Is, how big are these? Terry Reese map on the left. They, still, they weigh a couple of tons each. They're about twelve feet long on one side by about fifteen feet long. So they're on the fairly other. uniform in size. They're, fa- they're fairly uniform in size. In, this in area. many cases, and again, the contrary has been claimed. Uh, in many cases, they are propped up on other blocks underneath them. Uh, there are multiple layers. Uh, and in many cases, the bedding planes do not, in fact, slope as one would expect if this were natural. They're horizontal. Uh, and this is one of the things that's been missed in the, in, in the geological literature. This one calls it the Bimini Wall. Um, These look uh, AI generated. Go to the one in the upper left-hand corner, Jamie, please. It looks cool, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, um, you know, I'm just looking for some proof here. <laughs> it's all... Right, but things the... look cool. I get that, but it's like a question of how do we <laughs> tell the difference between ha- man-made and natural? natural. And that's not things easy. Don't and exist I've like never that. really again seen architecture Naturally. like this. We don't see stuff like this on the sites that Graham goes to in Ancient Apocalypse, for example. It doesn't look like this. The if it's the same culture at those places, we'd expect mm-hmm. to see more sites that look like this. We're, right, but we're, we're dealing with completely different parts of the world, correct? Yeah, which is my point that it's not all one culture. Yeah, I right. agree. So this one is fascinating. They never said it was one culture. They said it was one culture that then seeded into other cultures and through, again, freshman or maybe sophomore concept of this, uh, not hierarchical diffusion, but um, I did a video on, on different types of cultural diffusion. But cultural diffusion, they're going to go to these places, people are already living, and then they're going to merge their cultures and they're going to affect each other. Look at that one. That, that doesn't intrigue you. You don't look at that and go, wow, that really looks man-made? I wish. I think it looks really cool, but again, it's, I've seen a but, lot of... But dude, if, that, if you how knew is that for not sure man-made? that was man-made, that would, that would, wouldn't that sink up? Like, if, if you knew for sure, if this had been dated and everyone knew where this came from and you saw this and this was from an archaeological site that was well-known and established, you would look at that and say, yes, that fits that. If we you, wouldn't, had... you wouldn't look at that. If it was in a well-known archaeological Dude, site, I mean, say, oh, this piece he's is He's saying these straight stones. All the other stuff is clearly natural. Laying like this. This is natural? I mean, look, to How? me, I don't see anything that tells me that it's man-made is all I can I, say. I screwed that up. What yeah. I meant to say is I if, you, if you looked at this, you wouldn't say this is Dude. natural. If you, if you How looked at this is that at a, natural? A known archaeological site, I just reversed it. Sorry. If you looked at this as a, at a known archaeological site and there was other structures there and then there was this, you would say this is a part of that. You wouldn't say that this is natural. Not necessarily. So there's a site that I worked but with. But look at this right here. I, I get what you're saying. But you know Joe, what I'm saying? Like, like if there was, if there was other structures like next to dumb that, smiles, that were dumb smiles, dumb arrogant smile. You would assume, I would think, that that Mind would be man-made snake. as well. No, that was what I was going to say. Is there's oftentimes a lot of natural stones alongside archaeological stones at sites. There was this one <laughs> example of a perfectly circular depression at this site in uh, north of Pilos. And so it, it, we kept saying to ourselves, it's in, it's, it's, it's in the middle of a stone structure. And so we went back and forth on whether it's man-made or not, this circular depression. Geologists showed up. They said, nope, that's not, that part's not man-made, if you see what I mean. We, are, we listen and collaborate with geologists. Who so he just trusts the word of the geologist who happens to also have this doctor in front of his name. 
people understand how to tell the difference. Well, we definitely know that that happens with sinkholes. There's yeah. a, a great example of this very circular sinkhole that goes, it was like hundreds of feet deep, right, Jamie? That one that swallowed up those buildings. They love to and just it dismiss. Crazy. Like someone took an apple core to the earth, and it's, it's completely natural. It's just nuts what can happen. Yeah, it's you nuts. Know? It's, that yeah. is nuts. But that's a, sort of a, a, a different thing than stones being laid out in a uniform fashion like that. No, it wasn't here. What was the name of the site? Okay, so he just what, what, what for? Joe said. No, no, she, he was looking at Pelos, which is not the site itself. It was an early Helatic site north of it. I don't know what Helatic means. Blanking on right the second. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Since we uh, saw Eugene Shen and the reference from the audience to the, to the sheep uh, who believe in outrageous possibilities like a lost civilization of the Ice Age, um, I want to address, Flint, the You're way right, right. that uh, you um, dealt with the media about my work. Okay. Um, I'm going to show a little PowerPoint presentation here <laughs> and we'll talk it through. Um, well, we know that it's very painful to be burnt at the stake. Um, and heretics were burnt at the stake until relatively recently. <laughs> He's making a metaphor. And there's Galileo brought before the Inquisition for heresy. Um, the Inquisition was good, though. And here we have Flint though. Dibble, um, who, sorry if I'm being direct, Flint, but you do recently appear to have set yourself up as a sort of modern Inquisition to um, <laughs> investigate and test uh, whether uh, output actually... Uh, fits into what is regarded as acceptable thought by the mainstream. So I noticed your attack on the um, Homo, Homo Naledi uh, controversy uh, on your YouTube channel. Uh, and that concerns the work of uh, Lee Berger, who's an uh, explorer in residence with uh, National Geographic. Um, he was really too big a target for you to bring down, Flint. But uh, this guy, my friend Danny Hillman, Natawajaja, uh, he he oh, wasn't no. uh, such a big target for you to bring down. Uh, and you presented this um, this video on your YouTube channel. Okay, I'm going to say this right now. I am probably, I went through Gunong Padong. I did a stream on it, you know, a few months ago. I, I think it's natural. At least, yes, there's man-made stuff on top, but the stuff that's 26,000 years old, whatever, no, that's natural. That That's natural. And I wish that Flint would give this part up. Or I'm sorry, Graham would give this part up where you refer to it as a pyramid scheme, which is an insult uh, in itself. Um, and I'd like to take this opportunity just to play a little clip from um, Flint's YouTube channel, if that's all right with you, Flint. Yeah, feel free. Okay, Jamie, another bit of airdrop here. Um, now, this is uh, a clip from your YouTube channel. And this was an interview with Dr. Lutfi Yolvi. Yeah, now yeah. you, um, you very, very, very smart that you brought on a couple of Indonesian um, speakers to join your assassination of the work of Danny Hillman, Natuajaja. Um, Dr. Luffy Yondri excavated the site of Gunung Padang. He did major excavations yeah, there. Yeah, indeed so, indeed so. And, and there's a conflict of interest with, between him. Uh, that's um, Luffy at the, at the bottom there. Uh, he, there's a conflict of interest between him and Danny regarding Gunung Padang and work done in Gunung Padang. But I'm more interested in the way that you guys present this and the mockery that's involved in it. Let's yeah. just play that little clip. Uh, uh, Jamie. Harry, do you want to expand on any of these points or bring up a different point of view of your thoughts on this article? I will uh, criticize him about the, uh, the author first. Okay. If you see the authors, is, uh, <laughs> there is a Danny Hillman and the others, is, uh, you can see only one, the archaeologist. Who is the archaeologist? The, the one archaeologist? Archaeologist oh. is the only Ali Akbar. The Ali Akbar. Okay. Ali Akbar. So, Ali Akbar. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Eleven is the geologist. All the giraffe and the geologists, it's not the archaeologists. Wait, wait, they have one sentence. Yeah. They say, on top of this buried, decayed rock mass, a unique stone artifact resembling a traditional Sundanese dagger called Hujang stone was discovered. That is all they say. That's <laughs> is a... that how you identify uh, artifacts? In Indonesia. Yeah. Deny the of the the oldest uh, uh, pyramid. Uh, so I think it's only uh, Ali Akbar who support him for this one. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only one. There's only one that supports him. The only him. one. I think. Wow. I think because I don't I don't find any uh, person and the Graham Hancock too. Mm -hmm. It's a circle of the pseudo science for me. 
So, it's not the, his circle is not the archaeologist, you know, the Hello, people, our people, engineer people in the outside. They, they, they're waiting our, our research and they're waiting uh, what we say because they always believe what we said. The archaeologists said uh, we, we said is the is the is the civilization okay? Is civilization? It's like that because we are the researcher. We are the archaeologists. Now I'll continue with my little bit of. Uh, Flint's just not along. Like yeah, that makes sense. Um, if we can call that up again, <laughs> Jamie. Uh, that's the still uh, Flint, and then let's go on. Um, so here we have, uh, you have great influence on media and culture. You say that you just have a small YouTube channel, and that, that's true, Flint. You do have a small outreach on YouTube, but you have a much larger outreach with, with journalists, and you've put yourself forward, you and, and John Hoops, actually, as um, people that journalists should talk to. So this concerns Gunung Padang. Now, Gunung Padang was the first episode in my Netflix uh, Ancient Apocalypse TV series. It's about this huge pyramidal structure in uh, the island of Java in Indonesia, uh, which the work of Danny Hillman, who's a very experienced uh, geologist, um, has suggested might be as much as 25, 27,000 years old at the very base of it. Um, and and um, here we have uh, the Guardian. Well, there's it is free. Bill Farley like the video. on subscribe the Subscribe if you're not subscribed. He's strongly subscribe watching, if you want to see strongly more, recommending that Flint's interview, the one I've just shown a clip from, be watched. Uh, there's Bill Farley saying it was not worthy of publication. This is the article that Danny, Danny Hillman and his team published a peer-reviewed article on this. It went through a year of peer-reviewed before it was published until Flint and his colleagues began to put pressure on in the media. Uh, here's the claim being rubbished by Dibble and others. Um, they point out that Natwajid had provided no evidence that buried material was made by humans. Actually, they did uh, in Danny's in Danny's. Uh, estimation, the what the remote sensing shows is rock structures that have been cut and shaped and moved into place by, by human beings. Um, and um, the net result uh, is, uh, of all this pressure, was that Archaeological, Pros Archaeological Prospection, the journal that published the paper, came under such huge pressure, there was such a huge amount of media fuss about this, and I do think actually that all of that was caused, I think poor Danny suffered because his um, nice findings were featured in my show. I think the, 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 the reaction of archaeology to my show was probably why Danny got targeted, but at the end of the day, uh, the Witchfinder General worked out and uh, the piece was retracted, causing massive humiliation for Danny and his team. Now, what Danny and his team asked for was that criticisms be published alongside the article, but that the article not be retracted. And that seems to me to be fair enough. So that that's a completely... So while I've looked at the evidence, and I, I actually do agree with Flint's side, I in this particular instance, I also definitely agree that they should, like, you know, research isn't always correct. They really should just attack it in, in print. Um, instead, they just attack the character and they get it retracted, which makes me think maybe there is something there. I, I still think there's not because I looked into it for a long time um, and it doesn't seem like they presented evidence there was, but that's not how you honestly academically debate something. That That's just middle school bully. Um, Flint and his colleagues have uh, really created a huge fuss in the media about me. And this is just a small example. Satan loves Graham Hancock the most. But wait a minute. Not they me. Did, but hold on. They didn't post that, right? Who? That oh, no, 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 no. Loves I, Graham I, Hancock this, I'm talking about Flint's influence on media. Can and I make a yeah, but, quick but hold comment? On, but did he, you can't connect Flint to that. Go, go back to that image again. You yeah, can't I'm, connect Flint to this. Well, I can. Can I make a quick but comment? You, but even if but Shut this, up. Satan Flint loves Graham Hancock stupid. the most is either one of two things. It's either an insane person or it's some sort of a propaganda kid. Dude, uh, Joe just loves to just get on here and talk about how the comments don't matter. But they obviously do matter because this type of pressure that these archaeologists put on and that I've been the recipient of, by the way. Th these archaeologists, they come and attack me. I, I attack them back. But, um, you know, it's they're they're really cruel people. Um, academia has some really, really cruel people in it. Um, and I, I have a, a lot of animosity towards them for the way I've been treated and for the way I've seen them treat more popular uh, people in this space campaign. It's someone who's trying to dismiss you or get the fundamentalist Christians against you. It, it followed the onslaught on my work following the, the release of Ancient Apocalypse. I understand, but this person might have gone after you anyway. I'm talking about 
Can the I make a quick comment about my God, media God. influence? Well, a lot I'm of my media influence has to do with you announcing this conversation. The media rarely ever got in touch with me BS. about you until Flint. you announced this conversation over He's a lying. year ago. And then since then, I've had plentiful journalists get in touch with me to comment on things related to your show. So you're the one that's yeah, actually welcome, given Flint. me this media platform. I do not go to these journalists at all. <coughs> they contact me. And well, then... Which is great, because that's why you're here, and yeah. I'm happy you're here to do this. And I think we could do this amicably. We, we can discuss these yeah. things. If the, there's mutual the respect, which we're not getting from Flint. Whether or not this site has any evidence I'm, I'm moving on from Gunung Padang okay I'm, but I'm talking but I about I think that's kind of important so for the people listening like what evidence is there the evidence is can we see years some of, it? of of dedicated work that's published in that in that paper which eventually was was retracted why were you laughing when you saw that tool because it wasn't a tool you they never said it was a tool they said it resembles they use very specific language you scumbag Think that's a tool? No. What it, do you think that is? I think it's natural again. That was that looked absolutely nothing like any human-made tool I've ever seen. And to be honest, the excavator of the site agrees. And so you know that it was never described in can the article. Can we see that again? Can we see that image again? I don't have it on me, but uh, you can go back on there. We'd have to play the video again. It's we can Google it if you want to. I just want to see that image. I can Google it. But actually, it. that's a, the, the yeah. least important part of it. The, the, right, but the, the image most important is part the, is okay, the that piece right there. Is that, it? that piece that's right it. there. Boy, that piece looks like a tool to me. No, it, it looks they, like it's been shaped no, by human no. hands. No, no. If you Listen cut out the Joe. you cut out the part where we go into it in a little more depth and we compare it to the Kujang daggers, which okay, it looks I'm, like. Okay, I'm not saying it looks like a Kujang dagger. I don't even know what that is. But what if someone showed me that in a museum, I would say, oh, 100 percent, that was made by human beings. Does it mean it 100 percent was? I mean, in the weirdest of circumstances, could that be naturally formed? Perhaps. So I'll, I'll say on, on my part with Flint, um, he has me blocked on my regular Twitter. I was I just pulled up his Twitter on the five till midnight page um, on my Twitter. He has me blocked. Um, I got an argument with him and some of his freaking cronies, his his little goons, these tiny, small time archaeologists, um, small accounts. Um, then he goes on Reddit and talks and he was complaining on Reddit about how he was being abused on Twitter lying about what he said and how he's presented himself there um saying he doesn't block people unless they're being abusive um i responded to that and i said i didn't do that and you blocked me um and he was like oh give me your give me your account and i'll block you and then everyone in the reddit is like oh look he's such a good guy and then he um and then he did not unblock me uh did not respond again and then he deleted that comment or maybe he blocked me on reddit as well um but yeah he is a liar he has lied about me and to me, um, and he has the integrity of a shrew, which is to say non-existent. Boy, it doesn't look like it. Look at the, the right angles at the base of it, how it looks like yeah. it's carved and worked. Look at the Thank line you, brother. The appreciate that. That's not how we but identify I understand. Work. That's not how that. we... That's not how we... These are your methods, Flint. Not everybody has to conform to your thinking. And you're such a small-minded little child that you can't think outside of your own frame of reference. It, it's it's idiocy. I know he's not a stupid person. I don't know why he chooses to be like this. That looks very similar to the touch of Which modern is humans all or some human said. that we would recognize as human on stone. And that's the importance of people that are familiar with the millions of artifacts that do exist. So right. that we can look for things. That doesn't look to you like it was worked? Not really, no. No, it looks like just a natural yeah, stone looks that looks like eroded a weird like eroded that. stone from a slope. So, like maybe thousands and thousands of years of a channel that doesn't passing look underneath worked. the base of it has eroded yeah, rolling that part around of it. I don't know. Sediment, stuff like that, abrading against it. But how yeah. do you? Uh, what about the uniform peak, which is fairly uniform, the peak of it, the way it expands at the base, and it looks like there's a. It's just like not how we to identify it. tools, though. The line down the center. <laughs> That's of it. not how we yeah. identify that, tools. About that. No. No, and in fact, part of what we were laughing at is that they don't describe it or go into any detail about it in the article. They just describe it in half of a sentence, and then they show an image that's about the size of my, you know, the, like a, a, a quarter mm -hmm. or a nickel. How large is the actual artifact? I think it's something like this. So you're making scale. about 12 inches? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. The, um, the artifact is the least important part of Danny's work. I'm just, I'm it, <laughs> see, they just attack the weakest part of the argument. There's this one line in there. And now Flint has taken over the conversation to attack the weakest part of the argument and to justify their removal of the paper rather than actually arguing against the content in it. I was fascinated by the dismissal of it that you guys were laughing. 
because I just don't know if part that's that, a thing to laugh yeah, at. Yeah, just interrupt Joe and Rogan part of that again. Was in Link. the context of the fact that uh, Lutfi Yondre had been snubbed. He'd been working at that site for several decades. He'd published a book on it, and none of his research was ever acknowledged in this article. And yes. the media never, ever went to him, which is why I got in touch with him, because there's all this publicity Thank you. around. I really his care about this Gnum stuff Gnum a lot. It's my Partly life. Partly because Graham's right. It was on his show. And nobody's paying attention to the fact that major excavations had happened there. This is a, we, this is a, I'm sorry. I'm interrupting you, but this image looks much less uh, man-made. Yeah, and that's just another image of the same thing. But the other side of it is probably what we're looking at previously. Yeah, it yeah. is. I mean, yeah. I don't know okay. if this is man-made. That looks I... man-made. One, so one side does and one side does not. Which, just to my own on our, can the I bottom, the tool. <laughs> bottom right-hand corner, Jamie, click on that one. I'm going to start yeah. counting how many times this Get dude interrupts Roger. Joe. That's, that looks odd. That looks very odd. That looks that looks like somebody worked it. The other side does not. There's not another artifact in the world like it. Can, mm -hmm. I, it's, can I be clear? Yeah, please. That the issue here is not that artifact. I understand. I mean, we were probably the, getting lost in the weeds Danny's, here on this. You're letting Danny Flint and his team take over the conversation, years Joe. Years of investigative work with seismic tomography, with ground-penetrating radar. Using their expertise in those technologies, they are of the opinion that we can see the um, this is what we're image at, yeah. uh, second. The part that is oh, not convincing to me is unit four, four which is those the oldest part. Those are photographs from Lupfi Yondri's book, not from Danny Hillman's article. This is the excavations that he no, did no, I'm where he the, has I'm, clear radiocarbon. Shut sorry, up. I'm talking I top read. left. Okay, sorry. <laughs> top left. Keep where, where, keep, you, Jim? Yeah, where, exactly where you see the red at. and the blue. This? Yes, okay. this is this is an example of, of the, the, the resisti resistivity tomography oh, work go. that Danny and his team In the have article, done. there's a question mark after tunnel slash chamber. And the retracted article? My view is views. that this work needed to be taken much more seriously and not rubbished and dismissed in the way that it has been. Uh, and that I do, I, I, I do feel that the retraction of the article, rather than the publication of opposing comments is important and thirdly look for you so what what flint what graham wants to talk about here is the retraction of the article and of this evidence this specific evidence here which is whatever word he said i actually don't know what word that was and then whatever third thing let's see if flynn actually responds to Andre it. has not done any of the work looking into the deep depths of gunung padang his excavations have only been in the top meter or so can i pause you for a second site. here and explain what we're looking at so the people listening we're, we're looking at an analysis of the the ground structure yeah and um what type of instruments were used uh, seismic tomography, which sends sound waves down into the ground and bounces back a reflection of what is seen, low resistivity, high resistivity, uh, and ground penetrating radar. We don't have time to go into all of this in depth. The, the information has been extensively published. I've published on my website uh, a, a massive uh, article by Danny responding to the retraction of his article. What's up, Jay Burden fans? We don't waste a lot of time going on with it. Okay, that. but what evidence is there that this is man made? Uh, the evidence is the interpretation that Danny and his team, who are largely geologists, have put upon the imagery that they receive from their remote sensors. You don't need more, more than one archaeologist. And their suggestion is that there are man-made tunnels and chambers in the depth of Gunung Padang, that the stonework in Gunung Padang Maybe is we can not look in at its it natural formation or natural shape that has been placed by human beings. And when you go down and you take up soil samples associated with that stonework, you find that they date back to about... 25. So the radiocarbon dating has happened 25,000 years in the past. Yes, that happened. The The argument is based on whether that radiocarbon dating, you would usually radiocarbon date things that are found in the context of human artifacts. Uh, what I don't find from reading the article months ago was that the, the evidence for the, the radiocarbon date is the radiocarbon date. 26,000. Yes, it was retracted big time. It, this article was retracted. What I don't find convincing is that the radiocarbon date of 26,000 years ago was found in a human context to um, uh, to justify that that references like a man-made object. I think it's natural. Flint thinks it's natural. But again, we're really talking about the retraction. That That's still wrong regardless. Thousand years ago. None of those cores came from that tunnel or chamber or any of those features that they described. 
none of this is a reason for the article to be retracted. Yes. I never for, called for the article to be retracted. I didn't say and you it's did. still available online in its full text and all of its images there. Do you think having the word retracted across the top of an article helps the credibility of the article? Yeah, but they, they did not do an honest job of presenting the archaeology of this site by ignoring the major Nothing you do is honest, that have already taken place there. I totally and I think that that's very important when but you publish it. The, the, the excavations have been in the top meter. What was the findings of those excavations? Yeah. Yeah, can I get the HDMI yeah. really quickly, Jamie? Okay, so on the left is actually the book published by Luffy Yondri, and I'll show you some of the trenches that he's done. He's done, so there's this megalithic architecture there, and he's he gone doesn't, down he, in... He's still not addressing anything that Graham said. All the different terraces and along many of the different walls and excavated below them so that you can get datable material from under the walls that are visible, the same walls that Graham featured in episode one of Ancient Apocalypse, right? And so in the case of all of them, he has carbon charcoal that he has taken and that dates to 2,500 years ago. It's impossible for there to be clear charcoal underneath all of these walls. Here, let me get a photo. Also, he's found plentiful artifacts, ground stone. This is for grinding sort of uh, plant products. This is pottery that he's found. And then charcoal found underneath each of these walls where there's sterile soil, date that, and that tells you that the wall dates after that. Mm. And consistently across all of them, the dates came back as about 2100 years ago. So 100 BCE is when the walls that we see on the site were built. Danny doesn't dispute any of that. Dude, fl everything Flint just said has nothing to do with what Graham was talking about. He only went a meter down. We are talking about unit four here. We uh, The thing that's up for discussion is, oh, where'd the other one go? It, the thing that's up for discussion is this, uh, we'll let it play, but- it's, For the depths to which Lut Free Yondri excavated. But he doesn't 15, demonstrate of anything- It's the 15 meters to 20 meters below. This he one. He does demonstrate it's man -made, And he claims that view. there was a reorganization of the site that was reorganizing an earlier layer, but these photos from this excavation demonstrate that this was not built on earlier architecture. This is built on soil. And so there's no architecture directly underneath these terraces. None of the areas where Danny excavated or dropped the core into have anything to do with the standing architecture okay, that's there. Okay, so to summarize, these particular excavation sites are very clear 2,000 something... 100 years, 2, yeah. 2,100 years, very clear. Now, Graham, what evidence is there that there's man-made structures or any evidence of man-made construction that's older than that there? It's the interpretation of the ground-penetrating radar and the seismic resistivity, the seismic tomography work that's been done. It's the interpretation of that made by Danny and his team past a year... Which is th just this past, that we're looking at here? No, there's much more. Past it, but we just don't have time to go there. I'm okay. actually giving a presentation on, on Flint's influence on media and culture, uh, and we're getting drawn right. into a... But, but it's important because it's something that of, comes up, and I want to clarify. Dude, he's, uh, Joe is just letting Flint own this conversation. He's letting this effeminate little soy boy loser walk all over him, the frickin' orangutan-ass, bald-headed... So is what, but what evidence that you could show us that looks like uh, man-made structures, man-made tunnels, man-made anything other than this stuff that's on the outside? So the presumption is that these deeper layers are older, but why? They're definitely older uh, because of definitely the older. They're the probably not man-made. Brought up beside them. What comes to question is whether those soils were associated with anything worked by human beings. Right, and what evidence is it there that there are? The evidence is the interpretation of Danny and his team from the remote sensing, that we are looking at stone work that has been manipulated and maneuvered by human beings. And how do they that make is, that distinction? That they not never our... claim anything was manipulated and maneuvered. They... Why won't he stop interrupting? Never claim that in they that claim, article. I've read Joe that article claim a few at times. The, at the depths of Gunung Padang, that the stone is not in its natural formation. They claim that that's a tunnel slash chamber question mark. Question mark. They have yes. another area where they claim it's there's a different a claim flame. question mark. And I and a question mark. Okay, these are them bringing up how this might be something. They're not even making the claim 100%, and yet Flynn is still mad and not responding to what Graham's saying. I've never seen evidence for a pyramid where you're saying your question marks for these things. But this is not excuse. Syntax. This is not ex so. 
when we talk about all the conflict involved in something that is yeah. clear he's mm -hmm. day, like the Bimini Road. Joe's just an idiot. Right. Mm -hmm. So he disagrees. He says it could be a natural formation. Other people agree. This is less evidence than that. Right, because we're not seeing the actual stone structures, we're not seeing the actual work. We're interpreting this ground penetrating. Yeah, exactly. Seismic. And so with archaeology, we'd often do what we call ground truthing. So I showed More you that baths, road definitely. at Istria, excavated by the University of Texas at Austin. Uh -huh. The first thing we did was we did remote sensing. So we did magnetometry, and before we could figure out exactly whether the magnetometry was accurate or not, we put in trenches to test it. And that's always what you do when you do remote sensing, whether it's remote sensing with a satellite imagery, LIDAR, magnetometry, uh, GPR, ground penetrating yeah. radar is here. You always want to make sure that you test it because you, you have to be questioning that it, your interpretation of it can be. Maybe if you're questioning something, you put a question mark, Flint, and yet you're mad about it wrong because that does happen quite a bit of times you know it's like if you go out with a metal detector right and you get some signals it's not always going to be what you want it to be if you see what i mean right and so you actually go and you test it that's just the way that all archaeology with remote sensing works right yeah right. okay this is okay uh, obviously we Thanks, don't have Craig. time to get into depth but yeah what else what i'll say is there's a major article by danny published on my website which presents all his evidence and which uh, and and which uh, addresses the issue of what he regards as the unfair retraction of his paper. And I don't believe his paper would have been retracted if Gunung Padang had not appeared as uh, episode one of my Netflix series. Is that not. evidence when I got to you the as compelling or less compelling than Bimini Road? Uh, it's, it's at least as compelling. Ah, uh, dang it! But we, Graham, we don't have time give to Graham name I, okay. I want to complete what I was what I was saying, which is the, the influence that Flint and his colleagues have on, on media and culture. Um, and if we can put my... <laughs> Graham's been trying to talk my, about the same um, thing for like 30 minutes. HDMI Bananas in the chat. Button, yeah. So this was the next <laughs> slide. Um, this is uh, Benjamin Steele from the um, SEO journal, search engine journal. Thank you, Flink Dibble. Um, <laughs> There's history with Kaylee. She has me blocked too. Uh, and, and we're learning that... Loser. Uh, how She's basically a step away from an OnlyFans girl. Faith by legit scientists and creators. Um, people ask, here's uh, just a Google search. Uh, archaeologist Flint Dibble says, Hancock's claims reinforce white supremacist ideas, <laughs> stripping indigenous people of their rich heritage, oh, shut instead up. giving credit to aliens or white people. Actually, I've never... Did you really say that? No, I said that this idea of Atlantis, the way it goes back 200 years, it has been used for those reasons. So, so are you saying your quote she's, is incorrect? I think that it's... She's just a, a, a cheap Dutch floozy. Don't worry. You, you don't need to hear about her. She doesn't say anything important. Editing me out of context, Graham. I've yeah. never called you a white supremacist or a racist. No, no, you've how, said... How you've said that you've, hang on. That's because... That's because you're very, if I, if I may say so, very slippery in the way that you deal with, Snake. because you know perfectly well, you know perfectly well that saying that my work uh, encourages white supremacism, it's the same uh, thing, is, uh, and, uh, and encourages racism, is going to end up with me being tarred as a racist. And you know very well no, that tarring somebody no. as a racist in this day, look. So, so he says, your ideas that you're pushing support white supremacy and racism. No, that doesn't mean you're going to be called a racist. You moron. You imbecile. <laughs> the results there, down there, make no mistake, Hancock is a white supremacist like Trump. Look at this, there, it's racist this fiction title. pretending to These be These are science. not my words. But no, I, you I'm cite, talking about your influence on media and culture. You cite 19th century sources, oh, you cite 16th century Flint sources, and I label those as racist. And I see it as a problem to... Uh, to oh, we can't talk about evidence that's old. Sources without critiquing them, because this idea of a white Atlantis is what existed in the 19th century. I have Ignatius no such idea. Don but you might not, but you're citing those sources on Why should I not cite And them? I never make that the foreground of anything that I write. I put that in there as a paragraph, and I say he should not be citing these kind of sources without critiquing them, because they do the harm. There's a lot what, of harm in the history. Can you be specific about that? Like, what are these sources that yeah, he's sure. citing about I, Atlantis and why do you think yeah. that they reinforce This guy it? seriously thinks that citing old sources is racist. He just, oh, don't don't talk about this evidence. You, we can't talk about it. Only talk about how everybody's gay now. That's all we can talk about. That's the only evidence. Like and subscribe if you want more of this. White supremacy? Yeah, sure. So, um... 
The reason is, is because for Lose. a long time, Atlantis was used as a colonial justification <laughs> by the crown of Spain for claiming land in the New World. And so what they, this, this idea ah. of Atlantis um, from the 16th in, built up into the 19th century with the book on Atlantis by Ignatius Donnelly, it described this as this kind of global superpower that was, you know, European and that was responsible for these monuments in indigenous areas. It stripped credit away from local cultures of their heritage. Right, but he's <laughs> not doing that. I never said he uh, did. I but, said that he's uh, citing these sources. But this is something that is a very nuanced subject. Mm -hmm. And when you say that it reinforces white supremacy... Again, I said the sources do. Right, but you, but go back to the quote, Jamie. But go it's back stripped, to the tweet. It's, but listen, but you, this 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 quote here, reinforce white supremacist ideas, stripping indigenous people of the rich heritage, <laughs> and instead giving credit to aliens or white people. None of those things are true. I know but, Graham but, doesn't but, even talk about aliens. Right, but and why, so did that's you why say I'm, that? I said that not in specific relation to Hancock's claims, but in specific relation to this narrative of Atlantis that has gone back hundreds of years. Right, but that as Dibble, but here's narrative the was made so by they're misquoting people. you, are they? As Dibble states, such claims reinforce white supremacist ideas. They strip indigenous people of their rich her heritage and instead give credit to aliens or white people. Why didn't you get The Guardian to put that right? Well, I don't. Did you actually say that right. though? I don't decide with the right. He didn't even correct it. Hey, th thank you so much, big time. I appreciate that uh, very much for you donating that money, man. I, that means a lot. Um, I learned from Netflix that everything was built by Africa by Africans, and they were all part of the Rainbow Mafia. One hundred percent. That is that is the truth. If you don't believe that Queen Elizabeth herself was a black woman, you are a racist. Um, if you believe in the idea that nation states were made. <coughs> Excuse me, as nations, you are a racist. I did not say that Graham reinforces white supremacist ideas. As I've said, so this the quote history, is not real. Uh, they strip the the stories of Atlantis. He said it. Yes, and I think that that's an issue. So Graham, you go around the world to megalithic sites, right? So the quote, and, the quote, reinforce white supremacist ideas. That's not yours. No, that's not a quote. It's not in quotation. Right. It was in the other article. That's what I'm getting and to. Again, they in strip indigenous people of their rich heritage and give credit to aliens or white people. Well, in short, the series promotes ideas of race science white people that built are outdated everything. and long departed. Sorry. And this is and your own, right, but this that's is your not own, his quote, this is though. your own article, Flint. Here you are. I'm quoting from, that's a quote from your article uh, published in The Conversation. This sort of race science is outdated and long since debunked, especially given the strong links between Atlantis and Aryans proposed by several Nazi archaeologists. You are associating me with this, and you are attempting to no, get me No, I'm asking you to distance yourself from that is but actually but what that, I'm trying to do. But that's not do. what you're doing, though. Oh, my I, gosh. You're associating him with that, clearly. Brother, I don't okay. Propaganda. Thank you so much. You you did not have to do that. That is that is so incredibly nice of you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I... I I don't expect I don't expect the money, but but thank you seriously. That that's amazing. I do not you don't see this think that? Look at the way it's phrased okay. on your article. This sort of race science is outdated and long since debunked, especially true, given JC. the strong links between Atlantis and Aryans proposed by several Nazi archaeologists. That's like a part of the headline. So you want Link me to show you some tweets I've gotten right. from people that are I fans am, of uh, Graham Hancock? No, no, no. I would love to see those. Maybe he'll pick mine out. Oh, that'd be great. I hope he does. If I make it on Joe Rogan, I will be so happy. No, 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 no. Listen, stop, stop. Don't that's do very that. different. This is, they're not connected to him. They're just humans. There's a lot of crazy people in the world. This is you. We're talking about you. Yes, but what I'm trying to say is that people misinterpret Graham. There's lots of people on the internet that Good think Lord. he's talking about a lost Guys, civilization. Right, but what is going on today? You, you really don't need to do this, okay? <laughs> thank you so much. I, I really, really appreciate it. Like, thank you so much. But holy crap. Um, thanks guys. Uh, l let's keep going. Uh, wow. Wasn't expecting this at all. Uh, wow. I, I don't know what to say guys. That's, that's incredible. This is something that you chose to highlight at the top of the page. No, I did not highlight that at the top of the page. Why is that's, that like that? Uh, that's, 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 he that's did that. That's from, actually near the end of it. That's a quote from the article. <laughs> that's but, near but the that's, end of it. But it, why is it up there like that? I, I put it there. You did it. Oh, yeah. Jesus. I did not I'm, put I'm, that I'm there just like taking that. An ex, I'm just taking an okay. extract from Flint's article. Okay. But you did print it. You did print that this sort of race science is outdated long since debunked. What were you referring to when you said that? 
if you weren't yeah. referring to Graham. I was referring to his take on the Olmec heads, where he described them as from an African culture. Guys, he specifically what are you doing right now? Why is everybody giving me $20? Guys, you don't have to do this. I really appreciate it. For the love of God, I appreciate it. Please, if, if you're not doing great with money, d don't. Like you don't, you don't need to. Thank you. We don't need to start a trend. Everyone else, if you're watching everybody give 20 bucks and you're like, oh, I should give 20 bucks. You don't have to for the love of God. <laughs> thank you again. This is ridiculous, but thank you. <laughs> um, all right, let's keep going. Um, I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Big time. Enchiladas of bread JC. Thank you guys so much. It means the world. Um, let's keep going. Oh my God. Okay took that from Ignatius Donnelly, who also described them that way, almost in the exact same words based on their <laughs> facial appearances, despite the fact that Ann Cyphers has done excavation there and demonstrated with DNA and artifacts that these were indigenous people from the area in Mexico. And so that was an older essay that Graham has written, and that was what that quote was specifically re relevant to. But how does it reinforce white supremacist ide ideas that they were seafaring Africans? Well, because, again, it strips credit away from the people who actually did that. Right, so, but that doesn't re reinforce white supremacy. It reinforces, look, if anything, he's trying to say that, that it was black people from Africa that were able to seafare and yeah, create these structures. Using some pretty silly stereotypes. <laughs> oh, my God. Stereotypes. <laughs> is what I said. What do you say. mean about facial features? Yeah, yeah. But they, he's, there's many people that have made those connections. Looking at those, they look Polynesian and perhaps. And yet the people that have excavated it and done the DNA right at that site at San Lorenzo have shown that none of those people had African descent. Right, but what are those structures representative of? Are they the people that were there? Of course. Or, but is and it possible? And Cogbad is no, other people who have no evidence of African descent. Right, we don't Americas. have any evidence of it, but we do have this, the actual structure of those faces, and they do. I mean, be honest. They look either Polynesian. I can, br I can or, bring no. up some. They look fascinating. Excuse, excuse me. They're I can cool. I can bring up some imagery on that. Okay. Um, and perhaps we'll do that next. But I would just love to just complete this little point that yes. I want to make here, which is the influence of Flint and his colleagues on media and culture. Um, and 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 again, we've got the Society for American Archaeology, five thousand members. Flint is one. Flint's co-author John Hoops actually helped to write this letter for the Society of American Archaeology. They're saying that I embolden extreme voices that misrepresent archaeology archaeological knowledge in order to spread false historical narratives that are overtly misogynistic, chauvinistic, racist, and anti-Semitic. I mean, you apply those labels to somebody and you're going to get that person hated by a lot of people. The yeah. whole ball... Yeah, I did not and, write and, that. And, uh, no, your, co your co-author, John Hoops, wrote it. Um, we, we urge Netflix to add disclaimers that the content is unfounded. They, they want it to be called science fiction. In other words, that's a very clever way of canceling me. No. Cancel culture at work. Go back to that. Why uh, would and someone... Here's Flint, Flint, here's you're Flint. so much more of a celebrity than me. Here's Flint. Netflix, <laughs> correct. Cor <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry that I am, Flint. That's, that's not really my problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Netflix, hey, Netflix, correct your mistake and reclassify ancient apocalypse as fantasy. Netflix, collects your, uh, correct your mistakes. This is you pushing this, uh, Flint. Uh, and then the general it's media, fishy Twitter Netflix accounts? show, uh, ancient apocalypse, the, is the most dangerous show on Netflix. You use the word dangerous Where? repeatedly in, in, in your conversation piece. I don't think so. I don't think I've ever called you dangerous, Graham. I've not oh, so, called so you these things. You're you misinterpreting me. You don't think I'm dangerous? You don't think that... Um, I think that the way that you answer. refer to archaeology as Correct. you say that your number one enemy Guys, is archaeology and stop. things like that, you are promoting people to dislike what we do. We are doing no, no, our no. jobs. No, you started off Ancient Apocalypse by I'm calling saying, us patronizing I'm saying and arrogant. Archaeologists and, see me oh. as public enemy number one. Thank That's you. You started exactly off so by much. saying we're not sitting around thinking about you. Most, most of my dad's colleagues, when I mentioned I'm coming on here to do this, they had no idea you talk about the Ice Age. They I'm thought speaking you of about archaeologists pyramids. like you, Flint. <laughs> who see me as public enemy number one and who have quite a substantial out. I'm having a hard time concentrating on the, on the, 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 the debate right now. I don't understand what's happening. Thank you so much. Again. Reach uh, in the, the, the media. Uh, Unilad, right here. pseudo-archaeology, yeah. as Dibble calls it, acts to reinforce white supremacist ideas. 
Flint Dibble interview, Ancient Apocalypse, Graham Hancock, and conspiracy theories. I mean, what the fuck is the conspiracy theory? Uh, that, that, archaeo- that, that archaeologists are conspiring against me, which I've never said or ever suggested. You claim we're trying to hide the evidence, no, just I like don't. with Clovis first. We okay. shut down all the alternative tell me, narratives. Tell That's me a where, conspiracy hang theory. On, tell me where I've claimed that you hide the evidence. You have claimed many times that we try to shut down alternative narratives, that we try to silence them. I'm, that suggests there's an archaeological conspiracy where we're all working together no. to have one narrative. No, it suggests yeah. that there's a strongly held point of view, <laughs> there's a paradigm, and that those who go against Thank the you, paradigm Frank. are likely to be attacked, like Tom Dillahay, like Jacques Sank Mars. All of them still had successful careers for many decades. But Jacques Sank Mars on, excavated many other sites. Right, but are you denying that he was attacked for the very thing that you're Ooh. saying? Are yeah, and, and please look. If you don't have, look, if you have, you don't need to donate. I appreciate it so much, but really, I promise you, if you're there, like feeling like you have to, don't. Just as much, I love. Join the Discord. Participate in the Discord. Talk to me about this stuff. Lots of great conversations going on in the Discord. That that's what I want. I want to build this community. I love having you guys here to talk about this stuff with. I love giving my takes. I love that you guys are willing to listen to my takes. It means everything to me that you're just watching. So I look. If you want to donate, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I can turn this into continue to turn this into a full time gig. You know, I, I make most of my money from crypto, other stuff to support this. This is my passion. So thank you. It, it does mean a lot. I'm going to grow, but like, please join the community, participate. If you, it, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Okay, let's continue. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it so much. Yeah, I'll just don't do. No, but that's the. Co- I'm denying there's a coordinated attack. There but was there's no a coordinated, coordinated attack. attack. I've never said there's a coordinated. It's a decentralized no. coordinated. Uh, attack. No. They all think the same. Is there more than one person? I have no idea. Got it. This was before I was even How a scholar. How many architects were involved in this? Hmm? How many, when the, the people that criticized Dillahay, that went after him? Oh, a very large number. The Clovis First Lobby, the Clovis Police, as they used to be called by so other So it's not, it wasn't Well, one think person. about how many people actually study the Clovis period. That is a tiny period in one area of the world. The majority of archaeologists do not study that. Even Americanist that's archaeologists, completely irrelevant. most Americanist it's archaeologists study to the much issue later of the, periods. It's fundamental to the issue of the peopling of the Americas. But it's, direct, it's also the, direct evidence of a group of archaeologists going after this one guy for saying something that turned out to be correct. It's evidence of an academic argument which happens yes but not, not that simple right because he was correct and they dismissed him they wouldn't listen to his evidence and he turned out to be Thank correct you, what do you mean? he kept excavating that site he invited people down there and, and he convinced lost his money. he was right if he they lost didn't his listen to him and they didn't take the data and they did dismiss him and publicly they still did all those things that you're trying to obfuscate I'm not trying to obfuscate anything. That's no. That's not fair at all. But that would he, he invited. What they did to it's a him famous is event the from the 1990s saying. where he invited down a series of Clovis first people, and he convinced them at Monte Verde. They came down there. They had a conversation. He showed them the evidence, and what resulted from that conversation was that entire group changing their mind on stuff. It was very. I'm not saying there were not a few bad actors. Thanks, Jason. There's assholes I'm going to drop everywhere. the telegram. But what I am trying to say is that it's not. Some Please sort join of the telegram conspiracy of everybody in archaeology against Dillahay, but nobody against said Graham, everybody. Nobody, against nobody whatever. Said everybody. And nobody's saying conspiracy. I don't believe there's a conspiracy against me. I've said that a thousand times. You what said I you're do, public enemy number what, one. Yes, I am. To, clearly, clearly, Flint, to you, because you have, and, and, and John Hoops, uh, for example, from the University of Kansas. I can play you some stuff from John Hoops, too, if you want. So what is uh, this right here? It says, to Graham, so, Jimmy, and others, we see you and we'll share with the world it, just how you try to bully and censor us. Who's trying to censor you? Well, I'd argue that when people swarm this is, this me... Discord this is link is in the comments. Dibble, by the way, from yeah. one of his tweets. Well, there's times oh, when people oh, oh, swarm oh. me and they... People online, you mean? Yeah. We will fight back against their attempts to censor us. We will share real archaeology because I am the arbiter of real archaeology. Uh, only I, Flint Dibble. So trolls, you can kiss my ass. A troll to these people is anyone that doesn't agree with them, by the way. It's not a real thing. Um, to Graham, Jimmy, and others, we see you and we will share with the world just how you try to bully us and censor us. You're the bully, okay? Here's what happened. You were a pathetic little kid. Uh, maybe I was too. Maybe, maybe I was too. And you grew up and now you bully people, but you still have this inferiority complex about you. And you still think that you're less than people, even though you're the bully, you're the one with the institutional power, you're the one that talks 
to the mainstream media outlets. You're the one with all the institutional power behind you, and you wield that power like a club to attack people like Graham. You know exactly what's going to happen when you call him anti-Semitic and racist, or I'm sorry, when you say the ideas that he promotes are anti-Semitic and white supremacist. So you get it on a technicality that you can't be blamed when you make all these people attack him. And I've seen the horrible things that they say about him, and I've experienced myself from your people. Okay, and that's not your fault, but it is your fault when you openly lie about Graham, you lie about me, and you lie about the data. So no, absolutely not. Um, we're not trolls. We just want to engage with the material just like you, and we don't want to live in your academic bubble where everybody treats everyone else like crap, and they're trying to jump all over each other. I would much rather sit here with people that love this content, like everybody who's in this stream right now, and discuss it. Um, rather than just fighting and bickering amongst themselves. Uh, yeah, of course. Qu tweet people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't read that. Okay, I try not to, but I have a small Twitter account. Yeah, but that has nothing to do. It's just people. It's just yeah, random people. When you're public, okay, and you post something public, and you get involved in a discussion about some contentious issue that's public, the whole world can attack you. So try to connect that to Graham or connect that to anything. You're just dealing with people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who's not responsible for that? Telegram, responsible Telegram the links in the reader. comments, please Flint, join. Do you, do you believe that there's such a thing? You know, we've all heard the word big pharma. Do you think there's such a thing as big archaeology? No. Oh, Dude, what are you talking about? Okay, these universities, they get funding. They talk to each other. They cite each other's work. They can destroy each other's careers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this situation in the past um, with uh, Margaret Mead, who created a completely fake completely made up um, story. Well, it wasn't her fault. And this happened after she was dead. The The teenagers that she surveyed, they lied to her. These, these girl teenagers, they lied to her about what was going on in Samoa. And it was written, you know what, we'll get into it. That'll be a later stream. You guys will love that. It shows exactly what goes on here. Um, yeah, let's keep How going. How odd. Um, because here you are, Flint Dibble, January 23rd, January 23rd, uh, this is 2023 it's scare quotes it's sarcasm the reality is we live in a period where it where we're seeing an increased distrust of scholars and scientists yes. as an archaeologist i think we have to respond by I'm engaging with the public and we do in many ways the reach of big archaeology is way beyond that of graham hancock uh think about the millions of school children and parents who visit museums etc cetera, etc cetera. um what you what you you just told me you don't believe in big, the big time you really are big right time you've said there is a big archaeology <laughs> that's in quotes for sarcasm Oh, sorry, you lost me there. Uh, That's because okay. you're you're saying uh, so. So you don't think that um, the millions of school children and and uh, the teaching that the the teaching of archaeology, uh, what archaeology teaches us about the past, forms the basis of the education system about the past. Not people like me, people like you. That entirely correct. The garbage that Flint Dibble talks about is the stuff that's in the 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 freaking textbooks forms the basis of the education system about the past. Now, you like to present yourself as this small, lone voice, but frankly, by comparison with big archaeology, as you call it in your so-called uh, scare quotes, by comparison with that, my outreach is very small, even on Netflix. Graham, I was hoping we'd have a respectful conversation. Here. Yes. And you're the one... Oh, my God, I hate this guy. I, I, was, yeah. hope, I was hoping that you would not disrespect me uh, in the way that you've I done... I came here to present actual evidence, and I've done that. Here you have Dibble exhorted colleagues to mobilize worldwide in the battle against pseudo-archaeology. If there's any conspiracy here, who's it against? And this is from the SAA, the uh, Society for American Archaeology. This is the largest, or no, archaeology. It is the largest archaeological organization in North America. Let's move on. Definitely. Next one, Flynn. Are you the having fun? In, the ball's in your court. The ball's in my court? Yeah, go ahead. Say something, <laughs> say something interesting say something new. God. Say something interesting well, and new. That's, listen, this is like, not I, I came here to have to a respectful conversation. You're not respectful. I want to be very clear about this, Graham. I have critiqued the sources that you have used, and I've critiqued the evidence you've that you've used. You've ignored his questions. I have only met you for the first time today, so I do not know how you are as a person or how you treat other people. And so, to be honest, I think that you've just tried to go and smear me back for what you see as a smear on yourself. Fair enough. That's okay. I'm just presenting facts, yeah. what, you, what you actually said. I'm, prevent, I'm presenting facts as well from archaeology. 
Yes, uh, the and I've shown you the kind of big data that's, evidence that's that we not actually being have, done in the which areas disproves of the world. your entire civilization. Let's have a look at. <laughs> let's have. It doesn't disprove my entire. Civilization. Oh, I'm so respectful. I'm just going to laugh at you and your life's work. Of the continental shelves, one percent of the Sahara. Listen, it, J Graham Hancock has been researching these things since Flint Dibble was in diapers, since before I was born. 1% of the Amazon. How can you possibly disprove? How can you claim there's an Ice Age civilization and ignore all the Ice Age evidence that we have? The Ice Age evidence that you have, uh, don't dispute it. Of course there were hunter-gatherers in the world the, in the Ice Age. The <laughs> evidence, the absence of evidence is not the absence of evidence. This is very obvious. This is a thing that you're taught in elementary school. Yes, hunter-gatherers in the world Everywhere. now. I'm sorry, there's hunter-gatherers in the world now. There's hunter-gatherers in the Amazon rainforest. There's hunter-gatherers in, in the, the Namibian right. desert. The existence of hunter-gatherers in the archaeological record does not disprove that there are other things in the archaeological record. It's a stupid argument, and he knows that. I mean, you uh, we start We coexist off with hunter-gatherers today. Why shouldn't an advanced civilization have coexisted with hunter-gatherers in the past? I mean, look, as I've said, I think you have an issue with the sources that you cite, and I think that you have an issue with the evidence that supports your civilization. Well, I, I think we should probably yeah, take a break I'm and deeply like, un, I'm clear deeply our heads. Well, deeply we, we can certainly take a break. But I'm for deeply you unhappy that you have associated me with white supremacism, racism, misogyny, uh, I mean, anti semitism I like those things a little bit. It was Another always labels. the same quote recycled. So I said something once, and then it gets recycled Retracted. in like 15 I different pieces. I understand, but you said it. And I did the, say the, it, and I said that there's this history of, of this idea, which has been used by white supremacists, and that's an issue. You attach, and I, I, I would like Graham to, to separate himself from that history. Okay, so Flint wants Graham to separate himself from the sources, but he won't separate himself or retract his own statement, which he seems to be admitting. Cleveland, which he seems to be admitting is not true in a stronger way because he goes around the world to different cultures and he claims that instead of their ancestors building this uh, stuff it was done by his civilization they were the ones that taught people around the world how to do that but does he do that in his own backyard does he go to stonehenge and say that stonehenge was built by this lost civilization no he says it was built by neolithic british people because i and wouldn't so look for a lost civilization in northern europe during the ice age why not we because have hunter gatherers lost, there yes a lost civilization would not be during the ice age northern europe was completely covered in ice so you look at the places that would have been more temperate that are now much warmer idiot haven't you seen ice age the movie with the sloth in it come on man choosing to live in northern europe during the ice age it was a frozen fucking wilderness not okay. everywhere why would they want to live not everywhere not yes everywhere in maximum europe. we have people in the uk living there well, it's not where I look. <laughs> I look. I look in areas, in underserved areas of the world. We talked and so about this these, is an issue. We have the, the. We talked about these mysterious strangers. Um, the lovely aspects of humans around the world, and and then he goes around and tells people it wasn't their ancestors that did that. No, I don't tell people that. Well, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. He doesn't. I don't tell cite people a, a civilization that created it. I don't know. Besides the civilization well is teaching the people how to do it. Of the people that were there let me, before let in me, the exact right. same era. That's what he said. Oh, yeah. Let me summarize in very brief what I, what I said my am favorite. actually saying. I'm saying that there was a cataclysm at the end of the last ice age. It's called the Younger Dryas. Uh, there are arguments about whether this cataclysm was caused by fragments of a disintegrating comet. Uh, this is the comet research group. This is the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. But I'm saying there was a cataclysm at that time. There was a civilization. Now, it's you, not me who say that that civilization was an empire. It's you, not me, who say that that civilization, uh, you know, had temples and was highly advanced. He actually it, specifically says it's not an empire. No, he never says it's an empire. Uh, Flint doesn't even seem to understand Graham's argument. Um, and I, I actually, in this case, I don't think he's lying. I think he just doesn't understand what he's saying. Um, I don't say that. I don't say that. I'm looking, at, in my view, what we're looking at is a civilization like all others that emerged I, I out mean, of shamanism, but that went a little bit further than some other civilization, than some other shamanistic cultures. And, uh, shamanism, by the way, is essentially the, the default. It's a very, very broad. Um, if you go back to when I used to do standalone episodes um, on research topics uh, prior to episode 50, where I do interviews now on the main podcast, if you haven't checked that out, like and subscribe please. Um, 
shamanism is, is a very, very broad, um, it, it can mean so many things, but basically uh, the vast majority of uh, primitive, I don't really like the word primitive, but in the sense of, of um, low, uh, low population density and a lack of political complexity, we're talking about like, like a chiefdom is generally not going to be shamanistic. Sometimes they, they might be, but you're living in tribes and bands, hunter gatherers. They are almost always shamanistic. Um, so yes, animism is one type of shamanism. Shamanism is even more broad than animism, but animism is, I, I think probably the most common one in these beliefs. Um, but yeah, if you go back to my older episodes, I, I didn't finish that thought. Um, I, I did four episodes on the anthropology of religion that include talking about shamanism and, uh, and animism, animism, but, uh, yes, animism would be the most common one of them. I, and there are still shamanistic beliefs. Uh, it has a specific definition. You got to go back to those episodes to go into it as a specific definition. And there are elements of shamanism in modern religions today developed a highly advanced knowledge of astronomy that was able to explore and map the world. And I'm saying that at the end of the Ice Age, that civilization was largely destroyed, that a very small number of survivors settled them. Uh, illegitimate Scholar Book Club is starting with one of my co-hosts from Five Till Midnight, uh, Typo. Me and Typo, we're going to start that. There's just a lot of other stuff going on right now. But yeah, we're going to be doing a book club book reviews um, together, the two of us, probably on this channel hunter-gatherers as we would today. I've made this point before, but if there was a cataclysm on our planet today, people from our so-called advanced technological civilization would not survive it. We have absolutely no hope of surviving a global cataclysm like the Younger Dryas because we are spoilt children of the world. We do not have the survival techniques. The people in the world who know how to survive are the hunter-gatherers in the world today. And if I were a survivor of this civilization, I would head for hunter-gatherers and I would try and make my home amongst them so that, so that I could have some hope of surviving. And that's all that I'm suggesting is that a civilization that which had quite advanced astronomy, which was able to map the world, had a knowledge of longitude. I'm not saying they had machines. I'm not saying they Scary had idea. motor cars. I'm not saying they sent spaceship to the moon. I'm saying that they were destroyed. And this is exactly the, the anti-linear um, idea that, uh, the, the anti-linear linear idea that Flint at the very beginning was talking about. There, there's different progressions for civilization, even within the civilizations that we know about. The, the biggest stark differences that I think you can find is the differences in development between the uh, Eurasian and African civilizations and the Western Hemisphere, where you have the Aztecs and the Mayans. Uh, Aztecs and Mayans, the Aztecs largely culturally, I think, based on the Mayans who themselves are based on uh, older proto um, Central American civilizations. And the Incans, um, they, they have a very, very different development based on their specific geography and their lack of pack animals. Um, and you can see their development being being different, not worse, but different, um, you know, higher numbers in certain ways, lower numbers in other ways. Um, and uh, you can see the stark difference. So it, you, you know that it's not linear. It's not linear. Um, and even today when like, you know, you introduce technology to like somewhere like Papua New Guinea, um, you know, you end up with like cargo cults and you end up with people that live as hunter gatherers, but they use like modern tools in certain sense. Maybe they even have a cell phone. Like it's that type of thing. It's not linear. Um, it's never linear, but now, yeah, rogue philosopher is cool. We got to talk about rogue in the comments episode, like what 52, the guy who moved to Kyrgyzstan. Love that guy. Um, yeah, dude, it's it, it, Flint. It, it, Graham's doing exactly what Flint claims to want to do, but he doesn't recognize it at the end of the ice age that there were a very small number of survivors that those survivors settled amongst other hunter-gatherer peoples and benefited from their knowledge and exchanged knowledge with them uh, i am not saying that they introduced agricultural products to those people i'm not saying they brought agriculture from where they came from i'm saying that they helped to nurture the idea of agriculture uh, amongst amongst those people I suggest we take a little bathroom break, clear our heads, relax, come back, and let's let's discuss some of the ancient construction. Let's discuss. Before we do that, can I just the, sh yes. the issue of the Olmec heads? Yes. Uh, I have no view heads. actually on what they are, but can I think I they look after yes. some pictures. Please. Yeah. Yeah. They look phenotypically. They look very, very African. 
Let me get the uh, pull these up here. Yeah. I mean, so, look at so this. These are the, the, the most striking thing is the nose. These, this is a uh, Bantu nose. Mexico, way back in the early 1990s. Or maybe it's a baby um, with a scrunched and, face. Um, Who knows? They're certainly intriguing, intriguing looking. I, I, and these are found in sure Central America, Africans, by the way. Whether they're Polynesians or whether they're Maya, they could or well Polynesian. Be, they could well be Maya. They, they don't look like Maya. We don't know what Olmec look like. They look African to me. Um, yeah, I mean, look the nose. It's the nose, man. You you got the these flat noses with um with with these heavy curves over. This is um this is a very very uh stereotypically or not stereotypically. That's not the right word. But this is the, the, the uh, phenotypically they they do look like Western African people. I'm just interested. Yes, they're 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 all make. We have we have. Uh, a strong connection between the so-called Olmec civilization and the Maya civilization. Maya, in, in a sense, are the inheritors right. of the Olmec civilization. Um, I'm interested by things like this. I don't know what to make of them. These are Olmec figures from Tres Apotes. Uh, in the center is a picture. The, of the idea there, by the way, for the Olmecs is that from West Africa, mariners came with the winds. They came to Central America. Um, and they weren't able to get back, and these heads are maybe a result of that. I don't know. It's it's an interesting idea. I, it's not enough evidence on its own, but it's an interesting idea. And phenotypically, these don't look like Mayan people. Pharaoh Khafre uh, wearing the Nemes headdress, and I'm just intrigued by the fact that these Olmec figures wear a very similar headdress to that. Uh, that is interesting. I don't know what to make of it. It's I'm not, not saying that ancient Egyptians own, went but... to Central America. I'm not saying that Central Americans went to ancient Egypt. What I'm suggesting is that maybe both of them inherited a, a shared idea from an ancestral civilization that was, was ancestral to them both. And then in the same Olmec I mean, culture... like, look, that, that's not a Mayan face. It's not a Mayan face. It doesn't mean it's African. It looks African to me. It looks Bantu to me, but... It's it's not mine. There's no chance. I mean, we have these images on the left. Uh, the, the the figure that's often referred to as the ambassador, uh, and on the right, the figure is called the dance, danzantes, the dancer figures from Monte Alban. It's bracelet. I, I, I mean, Flint. What way. do you make of these figures? What what sort of ethnic group would you think they belong to? I don't identify ethnic groups like that, man. I don't identify ethnic groups like that. Why not? You ignore phenotypes? This is, this is what we're talking about. They are unwilling. Oh, it's racist to say that people look a certain way. People look different. We have different phenotypes. They're, they're results of, of, of different, um, of different, it's, you're supposed to celebrate diversity, right? Isn't that what you guys say? And I celebrate diversity here all the time, cultural anthropology. I learn the most specific things I can about these cultures to be more racist efficiently and effectively. Um, but he's going to sit here and pretend like, he should, he, he, like Graham should be ashamed just for talking about the phenotypical differences in people that are obvious. Zantes, the dancer figures from Monte Alban. I, I, I mean, Flint, what do you make of these figures? What, what sort of ethnic group would you think they belong to? I don't identify ethnic groups like that, man. <laughs> like, it's a stone it's carving. Laughing. That's yeah. not how we identify ethnic groups. No. Why not? Who's we? Your idiot friends? No, I, I'm not. I'm not actually interested. So, so good. So you don't identify an ethnic group. But what you do you see beards on these figures? Yeah, and people all over the world on every continent have beards from different ethnic so groups. So condescending. It's, it's just curious that amongst the Olmecs we have this, and we have this, and we have this, and I'm just intrigued by that. I don't that know. People look different. Yeah, I don't know what it yep. means. Looks exactly. Bantu. But I, I do find it interesting. Oh, he's very woke, And I right. see this as actually an example of the problems here because you cite Spanish colonial literature about... Cite Spanish colonial literature? Where else would you get the frickin' evidence? Say a white Quetzalcoatl coming. You talk about this no, as no, different no, no, kinds no. of people. Yes, you do in we've fingerprints We've got to get correct on this. We've got to get correct on this. Are you saying that the whole story of the bearded pale-skinned Quetzalcoatl was a Spanish invention. Yes, I am. I can show you a depiction of, of Quetzalcoatl from the pre-Spanish uh, period. I can show you, you depictions. Show you? Wait, I can show no, you no. depictions too. No, let, can I please get a... No, 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 no. I'm not going to do what you asked. I'm going to do my own thing again. Here we go. This is Quetzalcoatl on the Borgia Codex. This is from before... Wait, any the Borgia Codex? So now he's citing his own Spanish or Italian... Uh, colonial literature, but it's okay when he does it? It's not racist?
Europeans arrived in the New World. Yeah. This is on a hide. It is the ink has been analyzed. The hides have been analyzed. It's also it's like the opposite. Like, wouldn't you think that the racist people would be like, oh, there's no way that West Africans could could get to South America. How would they b build the ships? No, we're the ones saying, hey, look, these these Bantu people might have went to South America because of the phenotypical differences that are obvious. This is not a Mayan person. Mayan people don't look like this doesn't mean it's African. Again, we don't know, but it's definitely interesting, and it definitely looks Bantu. And this individual has tan skin, no beard, but a feathered heather, uh, headdress because Hands. this skin. is the feathered serpent god. Well, actually, we can't see anything from that. Look, Quetzalcoatl is more than just the feathered serpent god, and I don't know what's tan about this image. Wait, wait a minute. How is he able to tell the ethnicity from that? He just did it. He just did he just did the phenotypical difference that he said he wouldn't do. I don't identify ethnicities like that, but he does when it serves his purpose just now. That image, but that's not the point that I want to make. The point that I want to make is, do you think that the Spanish deliberately imposed an idea of Quetzalcoatl on the I think Mexican? that every single source that we have of white skin in indigenous Americas comes from Spanish sources. And therefore who, I who see it quoting as- indigenous sources. But n quoting them inaccurately because people quote things in biased Quoting way, inaccurately? Quoting inaccurately. That's a Flint Dibble sentence. Quoting, quoting inaccurately. You know they're quoting them inaccurately. Because, again, we have earlier it, representations is there, is there a of document? these individuals is there a that document? show they don't have white skin. Is this there, is the document, Graham. Is, is there a document against, uh, uh, about this Spanish conspiracy? Do, do, you, do you regard the peoples of Mexico, uh, the peoples of Colombia, the peoples of Bolivia as so stupid that they would simply accept an imposition upon them by the Spaniards? So, no, I think that interpreting these kind of sources is difficult. And so, uh, Jamie, do you mind playing my video by Curly Tlapoyawa? He's an indigenous archaeologist here in Mexico. He is a co-host of the Tales from Atlantis podcast. Can I um, interrupt you? How old is that image, the, the image that you just showed? It's from like the 14th century BC. Okay. 14th yeah. century AD, you mean? AD, sorry, yes. I, I misspoke. <laughs> chill. So this is uh, Chill, you chill. Invasion? Yeah. Okay. It's been dated and studied, the hides and the inks. Is there others of Quetzalcoatl from that period or before Yeah, that? there's other Quetzalcoatl and images they and they're all, they're all very similar, okay. yeah. Yeah, if you go on Wikipedia, there's several images of them. Of yeah, them. this is another thing. Joe Rogan, like, nobody comes on the show and tells Jamie to look stuff up. That doesn't happen. I've been watching Joe Rogan for, oh gosh, like, nearly 10 years. 2015, 2016? I don't watch him too much anymore. I've heard all I need to hear, but... Go ahead, play this. Yeah. I'm Curly Tlapoyawa, an archaeologist and cultural consultant specializing in Mesoamerica. Cultural consultant. I want to briefly touch... Look, this guy's Castizo. This is a white man, by the way. This is, this is, this is a full Spanish person, almost. Um, ...on why expertise is so important... He call him comes indigenous? ...comes to researching our ancestral cultures. Bro, look at this guy's face. Look at our faces next to each other. Look. He's indigenous. This this guy. And I'm going to use the example of a mistake involving the feast of Panquetzalistli, a Mexica ceremony celebrating the rebirth of the sun during the winter solstice. Panquetzalistli translates to the raising of the banners in the Nahuatl language. This refers to the multiple banners that are and shut up Blanquito. The various He's indigenous to Europe. You're right. He is indigenous to Europe. With this feast. Now, when the Spanish chronista <laughs> Dude, this guy is taking a job from a real archaeologist. Like Mexico uh, wrote about the feast of I do. Dude, I'm I'm 3 quarters Irish and I'm I actually am darker than this guy. Isn't that insane? It might just be the lighting, but this is a white man. This is a European man, Caucasian. They truncate <laughs> the word pan quetzalistli to the first three letters, P-A-N, pan, leaving us with la fiesta de pan, or the festival of pan. This shortening of words in colonial Spanish was pretty common, as paper was in short supply, and this was an effective way of saving space. Spanish friars had developed an entire message. Spanish friars? You mean your ancestors? Well, the problem arose 
when a non-expert looked at these writings and didn't account for this shorthand. And La Fiesta de Pan became erroneously translated as Festival of Bread. Pan is bread in Spanish. This simple mistake can cause this individual's research into Mexica festivals. He's so light. Entirely yeah, so I mean, he's probably got a little bit of indigenous blood, um, be it Mayan, um, Aztec, uh, or, or one of the other tribes, but not tribes, they're not tribes. Um, but like, he is majority European blood. I mean, this guy is 80, 90%. Like he is, he would be a, considered a Castizo, a full white based on that. Tales. And it completely distorted the actual meaning of the festival, all because someone without adequate training, someone without adequate training, something without adequate evidence, expertise matters, context matters. Expertise matters. Context matters. I am the one with the correct information. I am a cultural con consultant. Give me money and I will tell anybody exactly what you want me to tell them because I am a whore. It makes sense to me that if a group of people were conquered by white people who showed up on boats and, and dominated the society, that they would have a great influence on a lot of the myths and cultures. And not only that, but that they would heavily discourage deviation from the changes that they've made. To the Listen, another thing is that these like th these guys, w when you're talking about um, when you're talking about like Native American cultures, well, sorry, so North American cultures, most North American cultures, they didn't have the density to contain their beliefs. But with the Mayans and the Aztecs, um, and you know, these are disparate groups, the Mayans were like a collection of uh, shared culture, city states, and the cultural center of Central America in general, throughout the Yucatan Peninsula, as well as Belize, and there are still Mayan people there, you go there, there's a lot of full Mayan people. And the Aztecs, the Mexicans, the, the Tlaxcala, these people retained their culture a lot better than people realize. And um, there are a lot of, I mean, if you just talk to Mayan people, like I have in Mayan areas in Mexico, um, I mean, they'll tell you stuff that is not common knowledge, but you can hear it straight from them. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's true. There's misunderstandings over time and things change, but they're, it's, it's, this stuff is out there. It's not gone. And they were, th these, these beliefs were retained in a lot of ways. Those I digress. Tests. And if you did that over the course of one generation, you would have a complete different narrative. What intrigues me is that <clears throat> whether he's described as having white skin or a beard or not, we have a tradition of a civilizing hero, Quetzalcoatl in Mexico, Bochica in Colombia, um, Viracocha in Bolivia, um, depicted as a bearded individual who comes in a time of chaos. You're right, Craig. The, the Mayans, I'll be doing more stuff with the Mayans. certain skills. Uh, I was in Mexico in, in uh, January going to some Mayan sites. I hope to make some more contacts there with, uh, with some Mayan archaeologists and people and keep going back. Um, I, I love the Mayans. Um, they're, they're, they might become like kind of my, my archaeological niche. And then leaves. This this tradition is is a Pan American tradition. No, David, David Carrasco. <laughs> I think you have to respect the work of David Carrasco. Has, I do. has drawn attention to this, and to the and, and 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 to the notion that the magical pen of Cortez could somehow have hoodwinked an entire continent uh, into making up myths. Uh, and I just don't think that's. Crazy. I'm not sure well, if Veracocha is related to Quetzalcoatl. My I, so my I, I think Quetzalcoatl is like the main god. Um, I think Quetzalcoatl. In, in the calendar associated with him. Um, gosh, I have I have an episode. I, I got to drop that out. Um, I have an episode with a archaeologist who deals with Mayan um, archaeology uh, in the bank. And I was waiting for some stuff from him. He hasn't sent it to me. So I might just I might just put it out. Um, but yeah, there, there's some stuff with this Quetzalcoatl video coming up. Subscribe for that, man. That, that is a good one. Trying to explain the complexity of difficulty of interpreting no, I, Spanish sources. Can I show a different? I, I think he did mention Veracocha, but I'm I'm not sure he's correct in that. Um, I, I I he might be, but I don't think so because the Incans were far like they're not that far away in general terms, but they're they're blocked off in a lot. I'm not sure. I'm I'm really I'm not saying no. I'm saying I'm not sure about the connections between the Incas 
and the Mayans. But the Aztecs are pretty clearly a big portion of their culture was was based on the Mayans, and that's true of of the rest of the area as well. Video that talks about the complexity of Quetzalcoatl as a awesome, figure. Craig. I hope to get out there um, soon. Can you play the video by? Uh, sorry, let me. The the one by Marika Stoll, but not the hallucinogens one. This is an often made comparison, Kyle. And the other part of that comparison is that they were a cultural center Very just like well. the Greeks that expanded to more like an empire like the Aztecs, who would be the Romans in the comparison. I also live in Oaxaca and work closely with... Oh my God. This, this is another white woman. This... Hello, everyone. My name is Marika Stahl. I'm an archaeologist and research associate at Indiana University. Oh, I mean, she doesn't... She's not Mayan. She might be a little bit Mayan. I th she looks more North American, Native American to me. I also live in Oaxaca and work closely with rural indigenous communities. It's okay, so she's not claiming to be indigenous. Archaeologists do not engage with indigenous myths. This is simply not true. But once again, context matters. Context matters. For example, I'm going to tell you. The Kesha myth that Graham frequently cites was written 100 years after the conquest by Hispanicized indigenous scribes who were educated by Spanish priests. Hence, the overtly Christian overtones of this myth. But let's examine an indigenous Mixtec story recorded prior to the conquest. Several the way she talks with her hands is so obnoxious. Or Lord Ninewind in Mixtec mythology perform a mushroom ceremony and create the known world at Apoola. During this ceremony, Lord Ninewind plays music by scraping a stone around a human skull. This is a completely different picture of Quetzalcoatl than the one we get from the post-conquest myth preferred by Graham. In fact, in the Mixteca Alta today, when asked by anthropologist John... Wait, Mixteca? Isn't that Aztec? And, and I think Graham was referencing the Mayans? Monahan to draw Quetzalcoatl, his indigenous volunteers drew a plumed serpent surrounded by clouds. Again, context matters. And so the key thing I'm trying to say here is that Quetzalcoatl, all these different figures, they're not all one thing that you lump together. There's a variety of different traditions. You pick and choose the one that you prefer for your story, which so is do fine. You. I think that your investigations and your beliefs are totally cool. I'm not going to convince you otherwise. Same with people listening. I'm trying to show the facts here and just how complex the situation is of indigenous myths, of archaeological evidence. We have a lot of Kitty different Kibble evidence. Fine. A Pan American. Myth. Thank you. You know, it's funny you say that enchiladas because one of my, um, well, my girlfriend's cats, but our, our cats is very sick right now, and we're we're spending a lot on um, on very special cat food for uh, for Delia's um, urinary tract of a bearded civilizer. What's a Martin Bailey? Could not. I, mean, I know what it is for, for the indigenous but. population entirely by Spaniards. So that's my view. That's David Carrasco's view as well. I agree with that. Uh, you can't just again, impose if it. You look at my it was probably changed a little bit. I, I agree with that, but it doesn't completely dismiss it. Once to the SAA's attempt to get Netflix to reclassify my show as science fiction, you'll find detailed uh, information on that there. Do Let's you mind move on. sharing ah, my okay. screen really quickly? Can I pause it oh, for a sure. second? No, we, we know that once indigenous people are colonized, that they try to at least alter their beliefs and if not indoctrinate them into oh, whatever beliefs they I have see. and we have recent evidence for that in north america with how native americans were treated when they were put on reservations and brought into school systems and and forced christianity and told that they couldn't use their language i mean we we have very recent evidence of so i mean this is true but it wasn't anywhere close to as effective in mexico as it what like there's people in mexico right now that only speak mayan languages there's many of them but they like there's many different languages but like there's plenty of people still 500 years later because the populations were so large and disparate so it's it's not the same thing as what happened in canada the united states australia it, it's just it's not human beings trying to impose their ideas on the people that they've conquered it makes sense to I, me I that that this. would be something that would also have, would have been done by the Spaniards that entered Mexico. Yeah, um, I I'm not persuaded by that. In 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 this case, the myth is too is too widespread, and that constant 
the constant reference to yes. a bearded figure is is very odd. Um, as a as a civilization bringer in a time of chaos, in a time of disaster, after a great, great cataclysm. Again, I mean, Flint and I can disagree on this. I'm and so worship of Quetzalcoatl is associated with the what is called the Three Sisters in North America. Um, and we're I'm going to show this in this video that I have coming up with this uh, with this uh, Mississippian culture archaeologist. Um, or well, he's he's about to get his PhD. I'm intrigued by that information, and I don't think that the indigenous peoples of the Americas were so easily hoodwinked yeah, by the Spaniards. There weren't. I don't think it's hoodwinked. I yeah. think it's conquered. And I also think it's a lot more complex than that. So I study ancient Greek mythology, and you can see how these oral traditions change over time anyway, even without co being conquered, right? You can see, for example, agree, the weapons, Chris. the spears and the shields Welcome, by that the way. Homeric heroes use. Sue Sherritt has an article on this. And so, you know, you can see how Achilles' spear changes its description from a big Bronze Age-style spear, the kind of spear that we see in Bronze Age graves. And then the next line, he has a smaller Iron Age-style spear, the right. kind of thing that we this see. What happens? Painted on Iron Age pot. This this is general again, freshman, sophomore, college level uh, cultural diffusion, and and this is something that people just do. It just happens, okay. And but there's so so many examples in this case because Quetzalcoatl it spread from the Mayans, which is already dozens of city states, dozens of disparate uh, languages and cultures. It spread to the Mississippian culture, which is not well known, but it's it's pretty clear. Um, thank you, Craig. Yes, click the like. It, it spreads to the to the Aztecs, which is multiple different tribes and and uh, and states within 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 this empire. I mean, it's just crazy. Um, it, I, gosh. And so you know, you can see how these oral traditions adapt to what's going on around them. And I think that that's important to recognize. He's right about that, but it doesn't dismiss kind of what are, Graham's saying. It reinforces it. By, you know, Spanish and educated indigenous people and by Spanish priests as uh, well. Also, that you must take into consideration, I, I would imagine, that a lot of They infantilize, people, infantilize these, these they're people. They're actually probably not only being conquered by the Spaniards, but they're also being imposed upon with their language, which we know to be fact. Which is Dude, why Mexicans speak Spanish. It didn't work Some that well. Were recorded by Me, not all Mexicans speak Spanish. Most of them speak Spanish. It doesn't mean they ever stop speaking the indigenous language. If you go to the Yucatan Peninsula, you go to Yucatan, Quintana Roo, you go to Belize, people are full-blooded Mayan. They speak Mayan. There's different Mayan languages, but they speak a Mayan language. Oh, my God. Joe's wrong here. Joe is wrong. And I don't think Graham knows either. Bernardino de Sahagun within 20 years of the conquest. Uh, Bernardino de Sahagun is relied upon extensively by, by archaeologists. Yeah, these were, were priests after back when priests oh, like... Right, but don't... Yeah. Man. Were the scholars. In 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And again, there's just no evidence for these kind of culture heroes with this color skin or those kind of... Let's ears. take a bathroom He's break. He's lying. I don't care about the color skin. I do care about the culture heroes. Okay. okay. We'll take a bathroom break. We'll come back. Yeah. Much more to talk about. Okay. Thank you all. All right. Okay. Okay. So they're going to take a break. I am also going to take a break and go to the bathroom. Um, let me just get a timestamp here. Wow. We've been live for two hours. I've been stopping the stream a lot. I have a lot to say. Um, okay. We're going to take uh, a quick bathroom break. Uh, five minutes. Come right back. Thanks so much, everybody. Five minutes. Um, having a great time. We're going to do a little bit more, and then part three, excuse me, will be soon. Hopefully this weekend, maybe tomorrow, because I'm having a great time at this.
All right. Okay, and we are back. Um, hope everyone's back. I cannot take the headset with me. I'm all hooked up here. God, I love being back in my studio. Um, studio is awesome. Makes everything so much easier. Um, okay. So we're at break. I'm going to hit the 07... Heard every last drop. I hope not. Jeez. Um, okay, and let's go. Oh God, this still image of Rogan is awesome. Um, I'd like to, I'd like to pick up on uh, this finally on this okay. issue of Quetzalcoatl and on Sahagun and on the interpretation of indigenous traditions. And this is in my reply I'm never right on time. to the Society for American Archaeology, and there. Uh, attempt to have my series reclassified as science fiction, uh, where they suggest that all these stories were made up. David <laughs> Carrasco ridiculous. is a, a leading scholar of the uh, Americas, and he writes, I have no doubt that Cortes was striving to impress the royal mind with his extraordinary management skills, or that his literary craft was elegant and profoundly political. What is challenging to me is Glendinen, she's just another one of these archaeologists who say that it was all made up, Glendinen's claim that this Spanish political fiction of both Quetzalcoatl returning and Moctezuma's vacillation and collapse was picked up by Sahagun, who powerfully reinforced it, erroneously thinking it was an Indian belief when in fact the ruler's gesture of abdication was a very late dawning story, making its first appearance 30 or more years after the conquest. The stunning implication is that this Spanish fiction, the story of Moctezuma's paralysis, parades down the years through the literature and scholarship and is internalized by commentators less wary than Clendinen, all the way to Leon Portilla, who falls unconsciously under Cortez's charismatic pen along with the rest of us. This means that Leon's Porti Leon Portilla's extensive Nahuatl training and sense of the Aztec ethos, not to mention Sahagun's profound familiarity with Spanish native exchanges, contribute no effect criti effective critical stance in relation to the Spanish literary craft, which later Spaniards were not aware of and which a number of Indians internalized as their own. I'm quoting from David Carrasco here. I'm simply stating that this issue about Quetzalcoatl uh, is, uh, is more complicated than uh, Flint would perhaps wish us to believe. Well, no, I've stated um, from the very beginning that it's extremely complicated, that there's a lot of different versions of Quetzalcoatl his version mythology. There are a lot so of I versions. I think that it's wrong to say that there's only one version of that. No one said and that. I don't say there's only one. Well, you only no. use one in your argument. And That's so true. I tend to think, what? though, also that this you gotta is pick one, irrelevant dude. at this point, because I think what we're still missing is any kind of accurate archaeological evidence. With accurate. Dates. So when you go, for example, to the Olmec heads, or you talk about Quetzalcoatl, or when you talk about any of the kind so, of... Graham doesn't make the arguments with the evidence that he accepts because he only accepts the evidence that supports his point of view. And look, he won't say that outright, but that is what he's saying, roundabout evidence that you have a Yonagunian underwater, we're still missing dates and how this relates to your larger hypothesis of a lost Ice Age civilization. And so I think that that's important to think about well-dated evidence. So do you mind if I go into my argument about the domestication of plants and food and things like that? Sure. Okay. okay. Could, could, I, could I just, since we sure. talked about Danny, uh, Danny Hillman and Gunung Padang, um, I do have a major article on my site uh, where Danny refutes the retraction of his paper. Uh, <clears throat> and there are some images with that, which um, will perhaps help us to understand what he's, what he's talking about. Sorry, I'm having to scroll through an enormous amount of material here. There's a very long article on my website. Um, like you, I've probably created like 500 slides for this conversation. This is, this is not a slide. <laughs> I'm, like... I'm, I'm live on my website here. I don't know how to get to the bottom of this enormous piece of work. You don't have a slider on the right-hand side? I tried to use it, and when I used it, it, um, it uh, did something weird with the screen. I'm very old tech. This is so funny. Like a, a Who is that guy? For a text? Yeah, this is a what? I just want to get to the That's end. That's not Jamie. Is that Jamie? There we are, yeah. Oh, it is yeah. Jamie. Um, I just want to show some of these, these pictures that, that Danny uh, puts up. Okay. Um, and I would urge those who are interested in, in, in getting into this matter in depth to 
to look in more detail uh, at, at, at what Danny has to say in this article. Um, but uh, there's that so-called uh, Kujang stone or man-made artifact. Um, but it's it's really the, these are the different units that have been identified with the remote sensing. Um, yeah, and this is just a survey. Not sensing. Those units were identified from a scarp that was exposed, but that's okay. Was it? That, that's an important uh, distinction. Remote sensing. Um, not actually with remote sensing. Those units were identified from a scarp that was exposed. I hate it. Look, that was a needed correction, but the is so obnoxious. It's so condescending, so arrogant. But that's okay. But that's okay. It's okay. Uh, Better be okay. That'll, I'm not finding the pictures I want here. What are you trying to find? I'm trying to find the imagery of... Um, Yeah, natural column, no rocks, Gunung Padang column, no rocks. It's the way when you get down deep that this material is, is, is referenced, uh, that Danny and his team have concluded that even in the 27,000 year old parts of Gunung Padang, we are dealing with uh, man made workmanship. I won't take it further than that. Which flies are these? Are you talking about like B8, B9, and B10? Yeah. Yeah, I'm and those are at twenty-seven thousand no, years. No, those are not. But he's he's pointing he's pointing out that uh, as we as we go deeper, uh, we get material which is not in its natural formation, but is in a formation that was placed by by human beings. And uh, I would yeah, we we, we sort of covered that before, yeah. but like yeah, what is what's yeah. showing <laughs> no. that it was Keep placed laughing. by human beings? I'm is this what they're d this guy man? What was that last uh, image that you had up there? A little higher up above that what is uh, I'm sharing the same that? one they've got on the screen right the now. one that showed that it the outline of the area what is that that's the five terraces it's a terrace slope in a sense yeah, right so, so that's this, what has this been. part that's is not yeah, up for debate excavated by Luffy Yonder, and at the base of that it's been dated to the, the part so th this is this is the top part which is so th this part is not controversial this is the part of Gunan Padong if, if you're just joining us this is a supposedly like the the top of it where is it so long um oh the t oh god it doesn't expand out is that's terrible um oops uh this is in indonesia and so there's multiple layers in it unit one through four these are th these ones are human people people agree that these are human everybody in in the both graham and flint do but they're, they don't agree on Unit 4, which is the oldest one, which has been radiocarbon dated to about 25, 26,000 years ago. But those radiocarbon uh, dates are on organic material, um, soil cores, and they, don't, they need to be inside human context for that to reference that or, or for that to support the idea that they are uh, man-made constructions in that area, which, which personally I don't. When I went through it a few months ago, I didn't see convincing evidence of that. But regardless, about twenty one hundred years. Yeah, exactly. That's okay. right. And and Danny doesn't dispute. But that. Unit One it's is the top. The They're not arguing about that. That's, uh, that's this part is right, agreed what, upon. What evidence is it that shows that the deeper material has been manipulated by humans? Well, if we can that's pause for a minute, know. let me run through this enormous article, and uh, I will see if I can find it. Is any of the evidence visual? There isn't yes. really much of it. So it is. is it that same sort of? thing that like the imagery that showed yes it's like that rorschach test is what i right. call it yeah so it's it's i'm sorry it's too big it's too big an article for me to go through it's there okay. on my website it's danny's retraction uh it's danny's refutation of the retraction but what are you specifically looking for in this um i'm looking for his for his ground penetrating radar and his seismic why don't you just do a search for ground penetrating radar on this page just what is it uh command f Jamie will hook you up. Okay, ground penetrating radar. Okay, how many versions of it? There's two. There's only two. Yeah, this is this is the correspondence between like him and the and the can't, um, editorial team from Archaeology. They would have to excavate it, but there's not uh, which, a lot there which that unfortunately ended up in the in the article being retracted instead which of. I want to point out when I interviewed Dr. Yondri, his goal talking to me was to write a response. Like, we never got in touch with the journal to retract. It was other people that did that. Yeah, I don't actually we blame to write a response, and I think we're still aiming to do so. 
Um, so that's our goal. Like, and I, I, don't, I don't know about. I, I would like to see that. that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. And while we're on my website, I'd just like to say that I've recently put up what is up a winter major article um, concerning Gobekli Tepe and the issue of uh, whether we're looking at a transfer of technology or gradual evolution uh, or both. Uh, there's been a huge amount of research done around Gobekli Tepe. Uh, archaeologists have suggested that that research uh, vitiates my argument that Gobekli Tepe was a transfer of technology. I've been investigating that research in depth. Transfer of technology. Uh, and my it's view always is what it strengthens says. my argument uh, no empire. In enormously. But again, we're getting into material that's too far and too deep to go into here. I would just like... No, I think we should get into I'd this like, a little I'd bit. Like, what makes you think it's a transfer of technology? Well, I start off uh, my Netflix series by saying it's an enormous sight. You can't just wake up one morning with no prior skills, no prior knowledge, no background in working with stone and create something like Gobekli Tepe. They come out of... There has to be a long history it, behind it, and that history is completely... They come out of a context of nothing. In the Sufian culture? To me, it very strongly speaks of a lost civilization, yeah. transferring their technology, their skills, their knowledge to hunter-gatherers. And what I've done in this article is uh, I've brought up to date my investigation into Gobekli Tepe. Of course, the Natufians are dealt with at great length in this article. What do, how do I say? I don't, I don't know what the Natufians are. Um, there, there are many uh, predecessor cultures. The question is... Who worked in stone. The, who worked in stone. The question is, um, when did this, this stone like work? If you look at the um, yeah. research by Hakle and Gopher, for example, uh, and of the introduction of, uh, introduction of geometric elements into the stonework in pre Gobekli Tepe cultures, uh, you find um, you find that almost all of it comes after the beginning of the Younger Dryas, not before the beginning of the Younger Dryas. There is an interesting development at Ein Malaha uh, in, uh, in, in Israel, also called Ainan, where some kind of geometric plan seems to have been put into place. Um, but uh, the bulk of the work, the bulk of the the I hate to use the word that archaeologists dislike, a, a Neolithic revolution, but the bulk of the revolution took place after the Younger Dryas. Um, so I, that's why you think it's evidence of a transfer? Uh, yes, of, I do. Except that, that the fact that there's no domesticated plants or animals at Gobekli Tepe. So if there's a transfer of knowledge, that they found. why are they not transferring agriculture? Well, there was actually there was actually agriculture in um, Abu Herrera, for but example. But not at Gobekli Tepe. No, Abu Herrera is a Tufian site would, would that was occupied before Gobekli Tepe. Would you find agriculture <laughs> around Notre Dame? Hate him. Yeah, we it have. It was a sacred site. Gobekli Tepe was a sacred site. And right? we know that they're hunting gazelles by the thousands and harvesting wild yes, plants. Yeah. This has been d published ad nauseum by people like Laura Dietrich, who have talked... So this is, once again, the evidence, the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. Just because there's not evidence of agriculture in the immediate area does not mean that it wasn't. So so Flint's really... Is, I, I don't believe I'm misrepresenting him when I say that he believes that Gobekli Tepe, which is this megalithic structure, was created out of nowhere by um, by hunter gatherers with no prior experience. Which just it's just ridiculous. It's too large. Uh, a hunter gatherer population doesn't seem possible at that level of density or organization to be able to create something this large. And what we don't see is hunter gatherer. And you know you can't compare hunter gatherers today to those in the past. They're very different. They're living in a different context. People try to, but it's a little iffy. Um, and it, it's like these, these, this level of, of political and uh, social uh, complexity, we don't have any other examples of hunter-gatherers requiring this. We, there's no examples of hunter-gatherers having this level of complexity. Um, for uh, we, What we do see is a lot of shamanism, animism, um, that makes sense for, uh, for their hunting, uh, for their hunting and gathering about the kind of plants that they're harvesting I, i'm not sure kyle i think, it think possible so possible that they just didn't bring food to this area because it was a sacred site for ceremony and ritual and perhaps not thank you craig i'm gonna drop those links again to, to be for people to live in no and it seems more like they were there about half of the year so they're there during the warm months if you look at the so why would there be agriculture from there? the plant remains we have and then the wild plants that are gathered and then agriculture the means settlement evidence and the mortality Usually. profile no, it does. the teeth of the Almost animals always. that they're slaughtering we see that they're there basically during the warm six months of the year wait so the animals that they're slaughtering so it's a location where they're sacrificing animals probably right or or this is just them eating 
So this is still, but not at Gobekli Tepe. At Gobekli Tepe, at I'm Gobekli talking about. Tepe. Yeah, okay. for about six months out of the year, that's when people are there harvesting these. And so I sort of say they found an ecological niche, and they've learned how to exploit this and to sort of stay Complete there speculation. for half the year. They probably Fine went speculation. to the lowlands during the other half of the year, which is a fairly common mobile pastoral or hunter-gatherer strategy, which is where you move to where the food is in different seasons, right? And so that area right, is a very right. naturally... Uh, abundant area during the warm months. And so, you know, there's so much more that's under excavation right now by Lee Clare and other colleagues that shows sort of domestic spaces around this ceremonial center that we have. I sort of think of it as like Washington, you don't know D.C. What we have the spaces. ceremonial center in downtown, and then we have the less nice-looking areas outside. Is it possible that there was a sophisticated culture that also was hunter-gatherers because the resources were so rich that they didn't need agriculture? No. Yeah, I think that's no. No. What we're seeing in this no. period is sort of so there's, so there's no need to there's, look i i don't know but there's no other evidence of that there might have been but but flint would argue that this is complete speculation if graham were bringing up this argument he would completely throw it out because it's like we don't see that anywhere because there's no other evidence of this there was no need to grow plants. I think they plants found a successful niche right. and they really exploited it and did a great job For with it. For what? And so I think that that's what's going on right Dude, hunter-gatherers don't make like permanent structures like this in almost any situation, like uh, especially at this at this size. In this period, and it's also the period where we can start to see the inter the, the start of domestication. And so, do you think that that also explains the resources that there were required there? to build or of animals, stone plants. structures that they had the time to do this because they had exactly. abundant food? Yeah, they had abundant food six Dude. months out of the year, and while they're there, they they had the time to build those kind of structures. Exactly. But they, they, were they the first of those kinds of structures? You think that were well? These, I, I mean, that's a tough question to ask. So, I mean, we certainly have T-shaped pillars from other sites in the region. In fact, there were some. That were found by twenty Klaus meters in, Tepe in diameter. And Which is so, younger site. Hmm? The Valley Chori is a younger site. It, it is a younger site, and so I think there's there's more investment. Like the video, subscribe if you're not. Join the Discord, good Telegram, Patreon, two dollars a month. Period that we've known about for sixty years. Mm -hmm. If you go to Teles Sultan or Jericho, there's a pre-pottery Neolithic tower there. And so it's an enormous, not megalithic, but an enormous monumental structure that we've known about in that area from the exact same period. And so, so this is pre-metallurgy? This is this pre is all pre-metallurgy. Pre-wheel? Yeah, well, yeah, probably pre-wheel. And where are they sell. getting these stones from? Yeah, I, I uh, big you do, uh, Yehuda, I, um, I would need to look at it, but I, not to the scale. I mean, there's some interesting finds in Siberia of the last few years that seem to be something similar. There's something going on there that we don't understand, but we need a new understanding. It's it's not about their inability to create permanent structures. It's it's the scale of Gobekli Tepe is just too large to be created by the carrying capacity of the population density that hunter hunting and gathering, um, to our knowledge, uh, provides. And the, the level of organization, political organization, that, that we don't really see with hunter-gatherers to, to have this level. We, we see it start to happen with horticulture and agriculture where they get organized in larger areas. You, you can't really organize hunter-gatherers into um, these larger organizations past 150, 200 people, May, maybe 1,000 if you're lucky, but I don't really know of, of any. I, and that doesn't mean they don't exist. From the area, most of them seem to be local. The quarries at Gobekli Tepe are right nearby. And how do you think they moved those things? It's possible. It's hard you know, to say. There, there's so many different ways to move large stones. There's been so many different experiments that show with rollers or ropes. You can get enough people rollers. to know how levers, and you can do that. And so, you know, there's so many videos on YouTube of Wally Wallington and others that show you how you can move stones weighing many, many, many tons. Many, many tons? There's mystery around the moving of the stones. Yeah. I, 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 and, and I don't claim that there is. I, I, I think what's intriguing... I'll go back to Tepe, but there certainly is in what, Egypt. What's, yes, Egypt's mm. a bigger mystery, and we can go into that. Uh, show us how but, but what, but what, uh, what intrigues tons? me about go back to Tepe is the precision, the underlying geometrical plan of the site... Uh, and the astronomical alignments of Gobekli Tepe. Uh, and I think that um, the, the transfer of technology that I referred to did take place. It took place gradually. Uh, there's um, a site called Tal Karamal. You, you've spoken of Jericho. The Tower of Jericho is fascinating. It's a sort of Neolithic skyscraper in a way, um, but it's after the Younger Dryas. There's Tal Karamal, which has got five towers. Um, Kortik Tepe, 
Bontuklu Tara Abu Herrera. Abu Herrera is a fascinating site, and it was hit by an airburst. Uh, according to the team working on the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, Abu Herrera, the destruction of Abu Herrera took place because one of those comet fragments 12,800 plus years ago exploded in Abu Herrera with a, within 100 or 200 miles of Gobekli Tepe. Um, this uh, is certainly a controversial point. I don't, I'm not an expert on this particular topic, it is but I know a lot of people that are that believe that I'm the evidence is not there for the Younger Dryas. And many hypothesis. other people yeah, do. There's a huge um, dispute going on I've, about it. I've, it's it's not an interesting, my specialty, though, but I would interesting like to discussion say, in science. I would like to say that, ar that destruction is an archaeologist's best friend. So when sort of a site is destroyed suddenly from earthquakes, from volcanoes, from warfare, from fire, it actually helps preserve material for us. And so, you know, if there is this kind of global catastrophe, that should make things more preserved and easier for archaeologists to find. But isn't that dependent upon the scale of the catastrophe? Well, no, because even like it, it, yes, it's not it'll be published be, what, in the distant review. Everywhere, You'll be able to read still it. have hunter-gatherer evidence everywhere. Right, and but, so, but it could be incineration in a lot of places, and the hunter-gatherer evidence that you have is after the fact. No, the hunter-gatherer evidence we have is from well before the fact as well. As we, well. Yeah, right. we have hunter-gatherer evidence going back hundred thousands of years. Right, but and when in you all look those at periods. The, have you seen the evidence of the Younger Bi Dryas Impact Theory in terms of like iridium levels, nano diamonds? Yeah, I'm not someone who's qualified to be able to comment on that. I'm more thinking about it from an archaeological point of view, which is that if there was a destruction, just like with Pompeii or Herculaneum with the pyroclastic flow, that stuff helps preserve material for us. Same thing with earthquakes knocking would, over buildings. Right. Would, an atom, you, would an atom bomb preserve material for us? Yes, because the atom bomb, the very center of it might vaporize stuff, but then the whole area that gets abandoned afterwards because of the radiation, that actually is going to make Thank that you, area Egan. an archaeological here. paradise like for people once that radiation goes away. But if Randall Carlson's be... work on the impact to uh, the, the, what me. was uh, the ice that was covering North America. In one small landscape. What do you mean? Meaning he talks about it in the scab lands, right? N not just the scab lands. He's, he talks about that, but he also just talks about that there's massive evidence of intense erosion. So very quick waterfall, water flow that happened through an area that was absolutely devastating. I mean, look, this so is geo, the, the, this the is more rapid stuff. the destruction is, the better it preserves for us, just like with sea level rise. Right, but dependent upon how strong the force is, it's right? Hard to imagine it's how, <laughs> it's hard but to if imagine it's a global how... catastrophe, how is it so strong everywhere, yet it's not wiping out our evidence from hunter-gatherers at this exact same time? We have ephemeral That's traces, footprints, campgrounds, fires and hearths. Right. We have lithics. Because human beings did survive, right? Yeah, but we have it from this exact same period. But is that, period. wait, right, but human... wait, 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 the exact same period, this could be right after rather than right before. Radiocarbon dating is not that precise. So he's saying the exact day, but radiocarbon dating, he knows it's not an exact, it's, it's not exact. So you don't know if it's right after or right before or during. You don't know beings did survive at that same period. And it period. didn't wipe out the traces of them from that period. We don't know that. But the traces you're talking about are stone tools and... Hearths, footprints, mm -hmm. things like that yeah. that are extremely ephemeral. Animal bones and seeds. We have all of these things from the period around this supposed around? destruction. But do you have them in the area Could where be the after? supposed destruction occurred? We occurred? don't know where the supposed destruction happened because right, nobody's when, ever found that. But with Randall Carlson's descriptions of these massive floods of water, just hundreds of millions of pounds of water. Well, let's go to Jay Harlan Bretts long before Randall Carlson. I mean, the Channel Scablands are an enigma. Uh, the massive water flows, I don't think anybody's disputing that the massive amounts of water flowed through there. It's a question of exactly when that happened and why Well, it also, happened. what would be left over in that area? There's Nothing. not evidence of hunter-gatherers in that area from that Well, time. I remember he showed, when he was here last, he showed sort of mammoth bones from that kind of period. No, that was from Siberia, though. Wasn't it? Was it from Siberia or? I don't remember. But it, it said, wasn't, I said, wrong. It, it, it wasn't right, right, from the Channel Scablands. But no. let's, let's cut to the chase here. 12,800, between 12,900 and 12,800 years ago, a very dramatic climate episode occurred, and that's called the Younger Dryas. Um, the world had been gradually warming up before that. Uh, and then suddenly, it went very, very cold. There is evidence of a, a, a six meter sea level rise at exactly that time, which is very hard to explain. Um, but it looks like the suggestion is that that was due to impacts on the ice cap, on the North American ice cap, and perhaps on the European ice cap. The evidence for the Younger Dryas impact is found in 
what are called impact proxies, and that's iridium, nanodiamonds, platinum, melt glass like trinitite, uh, found in sites across a vast area of the Earth's surface, uh, 50 million plus square kilometers, an enormous, an enormous area. Abu Huraira, next to Gobekli Tepe, happens to be one of those areas. And what they're suggesting is that a fragment of a comet blew up in the sky, that it was an airburst, exactly the same thing that happened over Tunguska uh, in Siberia on the 30th of June, 1908. That was an, an object that fell out of the sky, almost certainly out of the... It disagrees with their narrative, that's it. thought to be it. the progenitor the of the, the, the remnant giant comet, uh, because that's the peak of the Beta Taurids. It wasn't big enough to hit the Earth and create a crater, it blew up in the sky. When it blew up in the sky, fortunately over an uninhabited area of Siberia, it flattened 2,000 square miles of trees. It was absolutely Where catastrophic. The if it had, no, so, there is evidence there for is that. There is evidence though. for that. No, Compelling evidence. No. There's not? No, Vance Halliday and his colleagues just published a huge refutation of this entire hypothesis. Of the which, ton, can, what do they think? No, not the ton Tunguska. Tunguska we're talking about the You're the talking about Christ. the... I'm sorry, calling something a refutation doesn't mean it's a refutation. No, but it still has not been replied to. That's well, currently well, the record of what there is. It has been some not replied to extensively by Martin Sweatman. But are you dis are you referring to Abu Herrera? Are you refer referring? I'm to referring to the entire idea of the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. Right, but yeah. Tunguska, you're not you're no, not. No, I'm not debating Tunguska. But that's what you were saying. Then he I misheard him. Okay, I, I you misheard him. him. Yeah, yeah, he was talking about the amount of forest that was flattened by the Tunguska. I, I misheard him. I thought he right, was talking about. Right, and it did yeah. happen during the torrid meteor shower. I yeah, I guess it happened what, yeah. recently, like. A, Hundred years ago, or yeah, something, but right? it, it, it did happen. Yeah. It, it, but it did happen during the same time of the year, where the Earth passes through. Okay, yeah, I'm so, not. I'm not debating Tunguska. Okay, yeah, that, yeah. that was what it seemed like. I you apologize. Were saying that I that's... think. I think this would be a good moment for me to just give a little bit of information about the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. Okay. can we can we do that? Because it's very important to to my oh. feelings about all okay. of this. Um, and uh, oh, God, these short sight. I tell you, being seventy three is no joke. Um, yeah, so the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, um, since 2007, uh, it's been a compelling and thoroughly documented case. It's been put together by more than 60 eminent scientists. Of course, some scientists oppose them as well. It was hit 12,800 years ago by multiple fragments of a disintegrating comet. Uh, Mark Boslow is one of the authors of that refutation. Geez, I'm on mute. Sorry. Okay. There's always great discussions going on. Um, I'm going to end the stream here. Three hours in. we got another hour and a half um, to go. We're going to do that tomorrow or the next day. If you're not already, hop in the Discord or the Telegram uh, or both. Um, Twitter, there, there's plenty of places to find me. Uh, article in the Dissident Review on Propaganda is coming out in, um, I, I don't know when, when that is. Um, thanks so much for joining me, guys. Thanks for donating again. Not necessary. Um, don't feel bad if you're not going to, of course. Like, it, it, totally, totally um, optional. Wasn't expecting that today. Um, very welcome, very appreciated, but not necessary. I appreciate just as much the likes, subscribes, and um, especially the interaction. Um, I love it. So thank, thanks, guys, so much, and I'll see you soon. Remember, you're human. <laughs>